All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are now into Champion Select for our first match of the day here at the League of Legends Rising Star Series Season End Tournament for Season 2. On the blue team, we have My Little Pony. On the purple team, we have the front lines. We see an Ezreal man coming out from My Little Pony first. Man, this is guaranteed to be a heated match. We have the front lines who has been thus far undefeated as well as Pony, who has been taking the LRSS by storm. I'm pretty interested to see how this one is going to turn out, because it's almost guaranteed to be a really close game. Now, the Ezreal ban does surprise me a little bit. Uh, we haven't seen an Ezreal play yet off of front lines. I'm not certain if they're changing up roles. We also haven't seen uh, Sariana yet, I believe, possibly subbing in for jungle for Yellow Beast. Uh, we do see a Nidalee ban now from front lines onto Pony. That's likely targeted Holy Braille. He's been playing support Nidalee fairly successfully, at least in one game so far this tournament. The uh, Sejuani ban off of Pony... Also not really certain, that might also be targeted at Sariana. not sure what Sariana plays, didn't have time to research that. Uh, yeah. Jace ban, definitely directed at Insanity though. Definitely, they have an incredibly strong lineup when it comes to poke composition, so banning out that Jace in Italy is almost a 100% necessary thing for them. Now the Lux ban very much uh, interests me as... Herf Jones, their mid laner, has played only Lux so far in his games in this tournament. 2-1 and one on him, has an 11.67 KDA on Lux so far this tournament. As we see a Zed ban coming out, likely directed at Insanity, but Insanity does pick up that Kha'Zix he's been so successful on so far. And it looks like it's going to be an exciting one. <laughs> um... If we pick up Jarvan here, I'm a little bit curious to see if we'll see like some early level 2 ganks, level 3 ganks, something kind of along that line. Yeah, we haven't really seen Jarvan yet from front lines either. It's very interesting when you look at front lines' uh, match history through this. Uh, the first game they had a sub for their mid laner, they had Yaya Puff in for Herp Jones. The second game they had a sub for support where they had Yaya Puff in for Hong Kong Popo. Now they have Sariana in the jungle, so it's very interesting how many different sort of lineups of players alone they've had, which has got to be making it fairly hard to plan against them as well. Yeah, definitely. Uh, changing your lineup constantly has to be, you know, a difficult thing for team cohesion. But um, so far, they've been able to pull it off really, really well. And on the other side, Pony has actually had kind of a similar situation. They have a pretty steady lineup, but they've subbed in their mid laner, um, Vincent 2 k instead of I Am Defective. And so far, it's been pretty successful, um, as well as using Cillian and, I believe, the jungle. So both teams are really, really doing pretty well. They have a solid lineup of maybe seven players or so. And it's really pretty impressive. Cillian has been uh, playing top lane the past couple of days, actually, and that Cho'Gath might just as much be picking it away from him. He was fairly successful with that uh, Cho'Gath against, I believe it was, who did they face? Fallback Gaming, I think, in their second match. So that might just as well be, let's pick this away as much as it is, let's pick it for Rerough. And then you have the Hecarim pick and the... Leona pick both of those things that they've been reasonably successful with so far, except for actually the Leona pick sort of throws me off a little bit. They didn't do too well with that when they ran it the first time. Yeah, and I think they might have just kind of changed the composition that they're going for. I mean, they're really strong with poke, but obviously they've gotten banned out of that type of situation. So a hard engage is, I think, their second best shot at everything, and that might be why they're going with Leona this round. Now this is very, very interesting, as we see that uh, they have picked up that Tristana on Frontlines. Now, Frontlines has played four games so far, and in four of those games, they've had Tristana banned out against them. In the other game, they picked it right away and won with it. So, 
it's very interesting to see Pony, who, which is a team that so far has had really targeted ban strategy towards the players on the other team, leaving that Tristana open. Maybe they think they can just deal with it easily, or maybe they're just sort of in a position where they're not certain they have enough bans to take care of that sort of thing. Just that's the least threat they're dealing with as they pick up the York and the Misfortune. Definitely, and I kind of feel like on Pony that their bot lane is kind of a stronger portion of the team, so they have such good teamwork that um, it may just be that they're not terribly afraid and they think that they can handle it, but I'd be interested to see how that happens to go this game. Yeah, and that misfortune pickup from uh, Spaz will actually be the first time he's played a champion more than once in this tournament so far. His versatility is just incredible, which has to be helping them, again, with that targeted pick ban issue that they would face otherwise. Uh, Pony is just, in the research I did this morning, really surprised me with the amount of versatility that each player on that team has. Like, they don't really have one strong champion for each, and I believe we're seeing Tarek for the first time among any of the teams left in the tournament now. Yes, and it's a terribly strong lane that they've got going with MF and Leona versus uh, Tristana and Tarek, so I'd be interested to see what type of composition that the uh, front lines is happening to go for. Yeah, and just sort of looking at it, I mean, it's definitely going to be a very interesting game. You have the two strong roaming mid lanes on either side. You have the uh, Evelyn pickup off of front lines and the Kha'Zix on uh, Pony. So it's going to be really interesting to see how much pressure that these two mid laners can bring across the map. It's not even going to be so much a game of what they do against each other as much as what they do to everyone else. And another thing I just want to note really quickly is Cillian on Yorick. Cillian, I was doing research this morning, he actually has the highest average CS per game out of anyone in the tournament right now. And his highest champion period is Yorick. So I'm expecting him to just sort of sit up there, farm all day, get 300 CS, and then suddenly there's 300 CS Yorick making double misfortune next to the rest of his team. Oh yeah, definitely. That is a potent one. But um... I'm not sure how that's going to go. Probably just going to be a farm fest top going against Rerough. Uh, is he pretty aggressive up there, or is he kind of just uh, welcome to sit back and farm, kind of like York? Well, I haven't really had a chance to watch either one of these teams in action, especially Frontlines. Frontlines was on LRSS 0 all day yesterday while I was watching and casting on LRSS 1, so I didn't actually see any of their games. But uh, Rerough... I don't know. He doesn't really seem like the farming type. In the one game he played, Cho'Gath went 5-1-7, and seven, so I don't necessarily think he was farming up there the entire day. He only had about 200 CS, but I'm not entirely certain of the game length on that either. And he is going for Ignite over, say, that teleport, so I think he definitely wants to try and do something on this Yorick at some point, or he's just taking Ignite because taking Ignite sometimes. But it's... I don't know. I'm not certain we're going to see much action in the top lane. I think what you're going to see is you're going to see mid lane having a bit of a brawl, and then whoever wins is going to try and do something in bottom lane. So I think it's going to a lot come down to how well those teams in the bottom lane are warding against, say, this Eve pick on the front line side. You have to ward in different places for Eve, otherwise you're just going to you're just going to walk past him. So. Yeah. So I noticed that we have quite a few ways to initiate on My Little Pony. How do you see team fights going? How do I see team fights going? Um, it's going to depend, I believe, a lot on the Jarvan ult and like that comes down because I feel that th he can possibly make a really good ult and just win his team the fight, but he can also possibly trap his own team in Misfortune ult as well and to me a hard time. I think as long as the Jarvan is careful then they probably won't have too hard of a time, but I'm not entirely certain that Frontline's is ever going to really be in a position where they'll want to look for a straight-up team fight. I think they're going to be wanting to look for uh, picking something off at some point in time, either just wandering around off by itself. So it's going to come down a lot to whether or not Frontlines can manage to ward effectively and counter ward effectively in order to hopefully catch one of Pony's members off guard. I would completely agree. They've got the kind of assassin thing going on with Evelyn, who can roam around the map quite freely. They've got, you know, the big strong tank of Cho'Gath. But as far as their composition, 
I think you're right. It, I think it's just more or less if they want to pick somebody off as opposed to engage in a full brawl. Because MF and Leona and Hecarim and clean up with, uh, with Kha'Zix, that is a pretty scary team, not going to lie. Yeah, I mean, just based off the picks and what we've seen so far from most of these teams in the tournament, I would have to, just sort of off the pick screen, probably give a bit of an edge to Pony at this point, just because these are champions that they've proven they're strong with. These are champions that they've proven they really know what they're doing. And I almost wonder if they didn't ban out Kha'Zix on frontline side because they were expecting I am defective in that mid lane as opposed to Vinsanity. I feel like that's possibly likely and they didn't necessarily adjust for their uh adjust their strategy for that substitute like they possibly should have. So I don't know. I think that I don't really wanna say it definitely, but I think that it's quite possible that Pony just sort of won this game off of pick screen, but we'll see because anything can happen and it's just going to take like one really good Eve gank down bottom and things could turn really bad for Pony in a hurry. I would definitely agree. And as we get into the game here, I think I know who has won this um, skin intimidation war already. Uh, we have battled cast prime Cho'Gath. That is the best Cho'Gath skin by far. Am I correct? I actually heavily disagree. I have a I have a love of uh, Jurassic Cho'Gath, but that's because I study uh, the history and like that, and just sort of the whole old bones thing <laughs> sort of interests me more than machine. But I mean, it's it's a great skin, but I don't really think I would call it the best. And I would definitely say they probably have the advantage there just off of randomly Irish Taric. But I mean, we'll see. Iron Solari Leone, you can't count that one out either. Yeah, definitely. And I seem to have gotten some things in my eyes, so I can't see, but... So another quick point to make before we really get into this game is going to be the uh, teleport on York. First of all, it'll be a lot better for him to influence fights and like that. He's going to definitely be looking to use that at some point in time, probably to secure Dragon, if my estimation on how Pony generally plays is correct. I didn't really get a chance to see them much, so I'm sort of guessing based off of numbers, which is never really that great of a thing to be doing. But also important to note is the... Uh... My goodness. The stuff that I forgot in a span of about 10 seconds while I was saying it. Uh, words are hard, folks, but <laughs> I'm interested in what will happen in that bot lane because I think that if Terra gets a good, either if either uh, support gets a good stun off in that bot lane, then something is going to be dead at some point very soon afterwards. So I feel like that lane is going to come a lot down to how well each support plays. So we're going to see them sort of wandering out here. Not really too much interesting in terms of items to note. Doran's Blade starts from both ADs. I need to see if they're running Lifesteal runes. That would be an interesting point. And already yeah. we have both teams converging on a particular point, so it looks like they've done their research. They're ready to defend against a specific invade, um, but we'll see if Pony is able to pull something off here. Yeah, and I remember seeing... Uh, we might actually see something similar to this. It looks like Pony definitely set up, setting up to do something, but we did see at one point Durgan in every game I saw them play, they would force themselves into blue, drop a ward, and then leave. But I think that Pony is just going to wait and then try and go in when Jarvan is starting his blue. I think you'll probably see them move at close to the, I would say, maybe minute... 30 mark, although they are backing off now as they do manage to place the ward up the ramp for front lines. And it looks like it was more of a defense uh, than an offensive attempt to invade, but they did get a good ward down at Dragon. Kind of interesting. I guess they might have expected an early gank on bottom coming from Jarvan. Um, but I guess that, that ward's going to allow them to prevent that and do golems in safety. Yeah, and we also saw the uh, 
a couple pings coming down from front lines where Pony was standing that bush. So I almost wonder if they, one of them just sort of walked a bit too far past that corner they were standing and got spotted and they realized they'd been spotted and backed off from there. Because it did seem a bit awkward that they went all the way from the uh, tri bush and bottom all the way up to Hecarim starting blue buff. Yeah, um, I would definitely agree. And as we see the players kind of moving in here to their lanes, do you expect that we're going to see any sort of level 2, level 3 early game? No, but I wouldn't be too surprised to see a level 2 fight in the spot lane off of MF and Leona. But it's going to depend on whether or not uh, Leona hits level 2 early enough. If they both hit level 2 and go on them, uh, Tarek started stun, but doesn't have that armor aura yet. This is a reasonably good time for them to go on. It's actually probably one of the better times for them to go for it, but it looks like Leona taking her sweet time hitting level 2, so do see it now. They, she does have both of those, but manages to miss the Zenith Blade onto Tarek, so nothing will come of it. Yeah, quite unfortunate. That was going to be a really good opportunity for them to get a lead before Tarek's sustain starts to play in and kind of uh, counteract their poke. Yeah, so we see Jarvan unsuccessfully coming into top lane. He's going to stand in that bush. Hecarim lurking in that bush in mid lane. I think they're going to go for it. Nope, not quite. Sort of. And we see Jarvan moving in here, but uh, it was just too slow. The timing wasn't good, and York is playing it pretty safe. But Hecarim comes in for Evelyn, gets the stun off, and is wreaking havoc. But Evelyn just walks away. I mean, yeah, that wasn't going to be terribly effective from the start. Well, it wasn't really terribly effective in terms of getting a kill, but it did force Eve down to half health, does force her to burn those health potions, and that's going to be a lot of what I feel this mid lane is. I think what you're going to see is you're going to see one side try and... I think you'll see the Kha'Zix sort of try and poke Eve out a bit, and then either jump on her and hopefully get a kill or otherwise... Well, we have something interesting going on here at top lane. We have Hecarim coming for the stun on Cho'Gath, and Jarvan goes in but actually misses, and Cho'Gath is able to just walk away. And I'm sorry, you didn't miss that. Yeah, that was a fairly, fairly close call, though. I think if Jarvan hadn't been there, they might have considered going a bit deeper for it and might have even picked it up, but not quite. So we're just going to see that probably go back to a bit of a default farming state at this point. So we do see Leona landing a hook in bot lane. And it's just a little bit of a skirmish here going on, just the typical thing. But um, I have a feeling that Tristana and... and uh, Tarek are going to have an easy time just healing up from that, farming, and keeping the game going until late game. Yeah, when a lot of people think of uh, Tarek, they actually think, well, this is a guy who is a support that has a heal that has mana problems as well. So don't really want to take too much harass because they will get to a point where he's just not able to keep up without running himself out of mana. And if he runs himself out of mana, he poses no threat to the lane, so they can just sort of walk over them at that point. But... We do see Leona going back, so I think you'll probably see Miss Fortune go back shortly as well and try and get that item advantage early. Yeah, and they are kind of far without ward coverage, and Jarvan is looking to go for a potential invade here, but I'm not sure that he's going to get anything, and he actually probably noticed that they're gone by now. It's going to back off and hopefully get a gank off on mid lane. And Evelyn yeah. actually is getting taken pretty low here. The ignite goes off from Kha'Zix, but a health potion narrowly saves her. Yeah, and just sort of the impression that I'm getting at this point is that Pony is doing a much better job in controlling their lanes than front lines. Is it feels like Jarvan is just sort of running around trying to almost stop the damage at this point, as opposed to really making any major moves of his own. We saw him move down towards bot lane after Tristana and Tarek had gotten poked down, shoved back to their turret. We see him showing up in mid lane after Eve almost gets killed by Kha'Zix, so he's really not able to do much at the moment because he's just sort of trying to hold on to everything at the moment. I would agree, and um, it seems like we've got a return to bot lane here, and MF was able to pick up an extra Vamp Scepter. Um, do you think that that's going to play a significant part in the trades going on? Is Tristana going to need to back soon, or are they okay to stay? Um, well, my main worry would be the fact that Tarek's down to about 250 mana or so. That's enough for stun and W. Oh, the Zenith Blade gets Deal. off onto Tristan and MF is dealing damage, but the stun comes off from Tarek, and they're just going to jump away from that one. 
Yeah, he has about enough left for one more stun and one more heal, and that's going to be it. So they're going to very soon lose their ability to counter this aggression just because Tarek's not going to be able to do anything about it. And, you know, sort of like I said at the start, this is a lane that's going to come down to these supports. So if Tarek can't do anything in lane because he doesn't have any mana, then Misfortune and Leona just get free license to run over them for the rest of the time that they're standing there. Yeah, and I see that we have a ward for My Little Pony on to the front lines blue, so we might see an invade here as that buff is up, but we have quite a few members um, you know, just kind of lurking around that area, and Jarvan might actually come up on Hecarim here. Um, looks like they're going to back off, and we might actually get to see the beginnings of a mini team fight here. Yeah. Frontlines definitely knows something is up. Pony is coming in. Eve the was moving over. The stun comes off onto Hecarim, and we're going to go on Tristana. The Xenoblade comes off onto Jarvan, and he's dropped dangerously low. And first blood goes to Hecarim. Wow, that is a uh, quite a skirmish. Yeah, and that's going to be a successful blue buff steal for My Little Pony as well. And that actually pushes them out to an early 1,000 gold lead. And at this point, things are getting... a bit scary for front lines. They really needed to make sure they at least went even early on. Otherwise, the, otherwise My Little Pony is just going to be able to force fights wherever they want and likely win them. They needed to be in a position where they're sort of dictating what's going on to an extent. As we do see MF get stunned in their tower. And <clears throat> it looks like they're just playing defensive. The exhaust goes down on MF and Tristana jumps in, but she's exhausted as well. Zenith Blade goes off onto Tarek and both AD carries are dropped dangerously low. They're actually going to turn to try and get another kill on this, but the stun from Tarek stops anything further from happening. Yeah, I'm actually a bit surprised that, well, actually, no, no, looking at the mana bar. I was only looking at the health bar, looking at the mana bar, My Little Pony doing fairly well, but My Little Pony is just sort of beginning to take over this game slowly but surely. It, it's not really showing in the farm difference. Farm's fairly even everywhere except for bot lane, where Misfortune's carved herself out a nice little lead and now has uh, Berserker's Greaves over the boots on the other side. But, I mean, it's just... The jungle presence has been so much stronger for My Little Pony at this point, and it's really giving him a lot of control. Yeah, and we see a little bit of an attempt on a gank coming back from Jarvan, but along with the theme that you presented earlier, he's more or less just roaming and not being very effective. Um, we do see him forced to uh, E over the wall um, as he meets Hecarim in the river, but nothing really too scary. Just kind of saying hello. Yeah, as we're seeing Leona, I believe, just going up toward at this point, although she might be roaming up towards that mid lane now. Just going to drop that ward over on the side. That's going to keep Kha'Zix fairly safe as well, so he can just sort of pressure onto Eve as much as possible as long as he stays towards that side of the lane. He knows that that's a safe escape route. But... The ward coverage coming off from My Little Pony is really phenomenal. I know that the uh, uh, front lines has that ward right there, kind of the throat of the jungler at Wraiths, but it hasn't been helping them too much. So right now, I think My Little Pony has a decisive lead. Despite only being one kill and 1k up in gold, um, they're getting some really good map control going on here. Yeah, and I think that... This game so far was best encapsulated by something that just happened. We saw Hecarim go in to take the uh, mini golems off of Frontline's side, and Jogath showed up, roared at him once, and had to walk away. And we in the mid lane, Eve we have Kha'Zix before. going on Eve. The Ignite goes down, and Kha'Zix flashes out, but once again, Eve is too good with those health pots. The stun down, bottom lane goes on to MF, and Jarvan is here, locks her in with the ultimate, and there's nothing she can do but ultimate and die. Unfortunately, we might see Leona go down here too, but she flashes out and is able to make it to safety. Man, that is a 1 for O. Oh. Yeah, but rather dangerously, Kha'Zix coming in now. I'm not certain if this is the best idea for him, but we do see Hecarim we as well. We see Hecarim engaging onto all three of them. Beautiful ultimate, and Leona gets the Zenith laid off onto Jarvan. Kha'Zix picks up the kill, and they're not able to pick up anyone else, but that kind of evened out that exchange. Yeah, that's just the danger of how... Uh... Frontline's ward coverage at this point. The only ward that they have in that bottom side is in that river bush. So until they get down there, they're not seeing what's going on. They don't have any vision down the river, so Kha'Zix was able to get all the way down to that ward, as we do see uh, My Little Pony going for Dragon now. 
Yes, and it's a great pickup for them, but they might see some action here. Zenith Blade goes on to Tristana, but she jumps out. The stun comes off to Leona, and they're not able to do enough damage. But Eve is chasing Kha'Zix, and man, is she going to pick up the kill for sure. Meanwhile, we have uh, Hecarim and MF has showed up to the fight. They are cutting down Ter Tarek, and they're able to pick up that kill. Unfortunately, not on the AD carry. Tristana sticks around too long and is forced to flash over the wall. But Hecarim is pretty confident he can pick this one up. Is he going to be able to get it? No, he's going to back off and actually going to face some danger from Jarvan, who are just beating on him and decides that maybe it's a bad idea for me to chase this. Yeah, it was almost a bit uh, comical there for a second where he had Tristana just standing next to that wall with her flash up like, I don't know if I really want to flash this wall. <laughs> and she stood there for a couple seconds before starting to recall and then eventually being forced to flash anyways. But uh, very well played actually by Frontlines in that I was not expecting him to pick anything up going in on that and especially after Tristana basically got initiated on entirely and then they just didn't manage to pick her up and ended up having i believe it was kha'zix fall to eve in the jungle during the course of that so definitely a bit of a boost for tristana will help sort of stop the bleeding down there a little bit as misfortune has about a 700 gold lead in that lane so things looking a bit bleak and we are seeing some of the roaming that you were talking about going on here eve just spent a quite a bit of time in um the jungle of my little pony and <laughs> Uh, it's not been effective so far, but she is definitely looking to pick up something. Just you know, acting a little more aggressive, maybe to help pull uh, Frontlines back into the game a little more. Yeah, that's really what they need, is they need just, in general, more pressure across the map. They have almost none at the moment, because that Jarvan hasn't been able to make anything happen. The only time he's made something happen was in bot lane, and that was just sort of coming up the lane as Taric lands is stunned, so that was fairly well played by them, but even then, they sort of overextended beyond where they had really good ward coverage and ended up losing one for it, so it ended up being an even trade. So even when Jarvan's been in a place where he's been able to make something happen, something bad has happened in return, so they haven't really benefited from it. And we see quite a bit of damage going down here onto Cho'Gath, but it's just the typical harass that Yorick is used to. Um, I noticed that we saw a significant pickup here on bot lane on Miss Fortune. She was able to pick up a BF sword, so that's definitely going to play a major part in this matchup down here um, as we continue to see the zoning and the harassing. Yeah, and um, also rather tellingly, uh, Tristana is about, even if she went back now, she'd still be 250 gold off of BF sword of her own, and she wouldn't have the health potions that Miss Fortune has either. So... I don't know. I feel like at this point, bot lane should sort of start to swing more and more into My Little Pony's favor, and Frontlines needs to try and do something and make something happen on this bot lane. Otherwise, I feel like Misfortune is going to get a bit too big, and about their only hope is going to be hoping they can drag this out until later, but that might not even work. And we see the Zenith Blade go down on Tristana, but a beautiful jump out, and Hecarim actually revealed himself at red, so is able to you know walk in and not really be too terribly effective as far as getting a kill, but the zoning is just, man, it, that is brutal. Yeah, things... We, we're still seeing Yorick getting quite a bit of harass on Cho'Gath in this top lane as well. I feel like we haven't really been paying much attention to that at this point, but Yorick sort of going for the throat at this point, and has carved himself his own lead of about a thousand gold as well, so really a... Frontline just isn't doing well anywhere at this point even Kha'Zix has 600 gold on Eve and they have a thousand gold on the other side everywhere else across the map so it's about a 4,000 gold advantage now for My Little Pony and it's only 16 minutes in. We might see something interesting going on here we have Kha'Zix who is roaming bottom and might be able to pick up a kill or at least a duel onto Eve decides to go in and actually gets the poke off Gets the ignite off, but she's just too fast. Flashes and picks up that kill. That is a pretty nice one, and it's going to help further his lead. Meanwhile, bottom lane, we have a lot of damage going on to Hecarim. The exhaust goes off, and MF is forced to blow her ultimate, but Hecarim is already dead. Leona flashes out, and we get the exhaust onto Tristana. Are they going to be able to pick up the kill? The barrier goes out, and oh, just barely. MF flashes in, gets stunned. 
nice, beautiful stun from Tarek, saving Tristana, and all we have there is a kill onto Hecarim. Yeah, we're going to see the tower fall as well, but I feel like that was just sort of a net at this point, so it doesn't really factor into what happened there. But that was very well played by Frontlines, even as they managed to lose that. And I think they're going to lose this tower in mid as well. So as much as they managed to make something happen like they need to, they weren't able to make enough happen to give themselves any real advantage off of it. Yeah, and I think that that's going to play a definite role here as Dragon is going to spawn pretty soon. Um, that map control that they're going to gain due to having that bottom lane tower down is phenomenal. I'd be interested to see if they're going to go for, let's say, the mid lane turret next or the tier 2 turret. Do you have an opinion on which one they might go for? Um, I wouldn't be too surprised if they go for actually any of them at this point. I feel like they can sort of do whatever they want. I think the safest thing for them to do would be try to take that top turret really quick and then possibly look to keep control over Dragon, obviously. Dragon is back up. I wouldn't be surprised to see them go for that fairly soon. We see Yorick taken very low and actually taken down by Cho'Gath. Yeah, the Ignite went off on that and the the uh, ultimate from Cho'Gath wasn't enough to finish it off, but the Ignite surely was. So a good pickup on there on that kill and Hecarim comes in to just kind of defend, um, pick up the minions, you know, typical. So uh, down at Dragon, we have a spawn going on here and we might see something happen and Eve goes on to Leona, but she just walks away and MF is just trying to get some chunks off, but Darwin ultimates uh, MF and she's gonna get taken dangerously low and actually killed here. The pot was not enough to save her. Wow, that is really gonna help that bot lane pick that up as Tristana ends 3 and 0. Oh. Yeah, and we actually might see off of that, we're seeing front lines looking like they're gonna pick up the dragon from that, and that's what they need. They need to be able to get these kills and they need to be able to turn it into something else. So far, they've only just been getting these kills every now and again, but this is the first time where they've managed to get a kill and turn it into something. So if they can keep this sort of thing up, then we might see them sort of start to come back into this game as they have closed a thousand off of that gold gap that they had uh, fallen behind. Yes, and you see that even though the front lines have lost their bottom tower, they've extended their war coverage kind of offensively, and we might actually see a dive come in here as they try to take out the mid tower, and Jarvan shows up to kind of thwart that. But um, speaking to the ward coverage, uh, they're able to take down that turret, and it, it really shows how Tristana might be coming back in that lead, despite being put down, you know, so early in the game. Yeah, and that's what it's going. That's where a lot of uh, Frontline's hope is going to rest from now on. They're going to have to hope that Tristana can get very, very strong and almost very, very soon at this point. I feel like if she doesn't get a lot going on for her in the next 10 minutes or so, then this might as well just be game over for them at this point. It's going to be very, very important to them, but the question is whether or not Pony's going to realize that that's very, very important to them at this point and try even harder to keep her sort of shut down as best as they can. And Go Go Minions were able to pick up mid tower here for uh, My Little Pony. Um, it looks like, meanwhile, we might see some action going down at the blue buff. Uh, we see <clears throat> My Little Pony moving in, including their jungler and their mid laner, and the front lines is responding pretty well. We have um, everyone kind of just milling about at this point, looking for a good opportunity to engage. We yeah. see the sun going down on a Hecarim, and they are going to go on this. The um, MF ulti comes off and hits all four members, but the exhaust under Tristana is preventing that damage from happening, and the kiting, the peeling for My Little Pony is just too much at this point. It's really going to be a beautiful fight for them. One for four, and they're going to be able to pick up this tier two turret off of that. Yeah, it's what we said about in the, the load screen about the best way for front lines to fight middle my little pony is to not fight them at all and just try and catch something out and they thought they did when they got that stun on and then they lined up in just that perfect spot for a misfortune ult in that choke point near blue buff so they can't win a team fight at this point i don't believe unless something completely insane happens so they need to keep trying to look for those picks but honestly my Little Pony has the map too well warded for them to be able to do anything. They need to start regaining control over that. They need to pick up an Oracles or something and start sweeping those wards out in addition to placing their own. You know, and 
since they're going against Miss Fortune, I know that she hasn't picked up many kills, but the farm has been insane. I think that they really need to focus on not fighting in the jungle unless they're catching someone else out, because the choke points for that ultimate to go down are just uh, too frequent, too many. Um, <clears throat> and it's really dangerous for them to get caught in the middle of something like that. Yeah, definitely. I mean, there's just nothing they can do in a straight-up fight at this point, and them pressuring mid lane is very, very dangerous. They cannot be there if... Your York's teleport is still down, so it's not quite too bad, because it'd be a 5v4, but... I'm honestly surprised that My Little Pony isn't looking to just start something right here. You see the stun go off onto the tank minion. I don't know if that was just a misclick or... Uh, well, I guess it had to have been. Yeah, they need to be very careful, Frontlines does. Uh, York split pushing that top lane. They need to deal with him at some point. But also, if they get out of position and they get, say, a stun followed by a Hecarim ult onto... Tristana, things are going to get scary. And we, we see, see a fight breaking out. Jarvan almost wanting to go into Hecarim, but they are too hesitant to engage, probably rightfully so. So we're just getting a lot of poke damage on them here, and it looks like they might back off um, just because York is being so successful in that top lane. So My Little Pony is going to chase after this, but I don't know that they want to full-on engage. They are a little more scared than they probably need to be considering their lead. Um, I feel like at this point My Little Pony can take possibly just take mid tower while they have two people committed up here to going for York, but it looks like Kha'Zix's going to roam up and try and pick off Tristana instead. Yes, and we have the typical 2v2 going on top, and they are pressing into the turret on the inhibitor, and it's really going to be a decisive um, victory for My Little Pony if they're able to pick that up, but it looks like they're kind of just pressuring that and really going after mid lane turret. Yeah, I feel like if this game doesn't end in the next two or three minutes, then it's going to be quite possible that we'll see Frontline's able to put up a bit of a fight. But at this point, Pony just has him pretty much completely on the ropes. And the MF ulti goes down on all five members. Shana jumps in, is able to pick up a kill, um, but uh, Jarvan is dealing havoc onto MF. She flashes in and picks up a beautiful kill onto almost Jarvan. And a good Leona ult slows down the Cho'Gath here, and that is, wow, man, the ultimates on that side from My Little Pony were just phenomenal on that team fight. Yeah, I don't feel at this point that, I don't know, it's going to be really, really, really difficult for Frontline to get back into this game at this point. And oh, it looks like they're actually possibly just surrendering at this point yeah a bit too difficult for front lines to be able to get back in i feel like they definitely made mistakes in champ select not banning out that kha'zix not really getting things like that off that and they just sort of picked a team that didn't really work that great together it worked okay if they were able to pick something off by itself, but they never were in a position to do that, and it was sort of a risk that they took running a comp like that that just didn't pay off for them. And as we take a brief break here, we are going to get into Game 2 of the Frontlines versus My Little Pony. Um, I'd be interested to see if they have any swaps here as far as lineups go, because I think that they might actually. So we might see some more interesting bands, a little bit of different team comp, and something along those lines.
All right, so we are now into picks and bans for game number two. Blue team this side, uh, this time around, will be front lines. Purple team will be My Little Pony. As we see the Jarvan ban coming off from front lines in the wake of that Jarvan play in the last game. Yeah, and I'm a little bit surprised that they banned that out. Um, I guess they didn't want to play it, and they didn't want to see uh, Zen Zero pick that up in this next game. Yeah, we do see the Ezreal ban once again coming out of My Little Pony there. It's got to be some reason for that that I just didn't pick up on in my research. As we do see a Yorick ban coming out as well, definitely targeted at Cillian. Yeah, and I think that Ezreal ban might be a, um, <clears throat> a little bit of a general ban on My Little Pony's side. Um, I know that they feel that the blue Ezreal build is pretty strong right now, um, and that might just be why they're banning that out. It's possible, but I'm not entirely certain it fits with Pony's general uh, pick ban strategy. In their first few games, they banned out Ezreal, I believe, twice, and those were both targeted bans against, I believe it was... Uh... My goodness, team names are hard to remember. <laughs> uh, fallback gaming. So we are seeing in Nidalee and Janna bans, those are targeted respectively at the supports holy braille and yaya puff as we see the kha'zix this time picked up by front lines and that is almost a guarantee that they're going to go for a typical poke comp here um they're just so strong with that that um uh, i'd be interested to see if they go with anything different because uh, a lot of times people say that jace is the core champion required for any sort of good poke composition yeah, I believe it was uh, in an interview, Cloud Templar, one of the jungler for, I believe, Azubu, f well, the formerly Azubu, now CJ Entis Frost, said something to that effect, and that's why you always see him in, like, high-level Korean play. We do know that uh, Vinsanity has played Jace already once this tournament. His uh, game so far in this tournament, he's 3-0 in Kha'Zix and 1-0 in Jace when they ban Kha'Zix, so... They sort of continue to allow him to have the Comfort Champions because they just don't have enough bans to deal with My Little Pony's versatility, and they're going to allow Zin, uh, Zinazero, that Hecarim as well, that he's been fairly successful with. We will see Misfortune come out for uh, Sinrio, though. I'd be interested to see what kind of support we're going to see picked up here. Leona might be another smart pick to go along with MF once again because Janna is banned out, but... We still have some champions like Thresh and Blitz open, so I'd be interested to see if we see anything like that picked up. Yeah, we saw Malphite picked up by the uh, front lines in a game against, well, it was their second match, and I believe that was against Poho Pimps, where they managed to pick up that Malphite, and that did fairly well for him. Uh, Malphite ended up going 4 and 5, and they ran, I believe, Misfortune that same game. So I think they're sort of trying to beat Pony at their own game. They're running that AoE CC off of Malphite. They're running a Kha'Zix. They're running Misfortune, so they have that bullet time going across. And My Little Pony is responding with Thresh and Sivir. Yes, and that can be a dangerous composition. I know they're swapping out the sports here, but Severe is a really strong champion for Spaz. I know that it's been quoted as one of his best, especially with that spell shield, so that might be a little bit of good protection against, let's say, Leona, if they're able to pick it up for this MF combination at bottom lane. Yeah, we actually, looking at the stats I have, they ran Severe, I believe, against, again, I think it was... It was their second match, so it would have been Fallback Gaming. It's, everything is coming back to what these two teams ran against Fallback Gaming, basically. But, um, actually, no. How is that possible? They ran it in their second match. That's all I'm going to say at this point, because I actually can't remember what team My Little Pony ran their second match against. But they ran a Sivir. They did not run it with Thresh, though. I believe they ran it with Sona. So it's going to be interesting to see what they're doing now that they have the spooky ghost team with the Hecarim and the Thresh, as we see Nautilus and Nami picked up on front lines. Yes, and they're really switching between the champions here. They're just playing with this at this point. Um... So we see the Thresh come out from Holy Braille. I haven't been able to see that in any of the previous games. Do you know, uh, is that a common pick for My Little Pony, or is this a new thing that they're trying out? 
haven't seen it yet, so I'm excited to see it come out. And I don't believe we've seen NAMI yet from any of the teams left in the tournament, except for uh, Lead by Example, who ran NAMI in all three games they played against My Little Pony. And they were actually the only team that has won a game against My Little Pony so far. My Little Pony undefeated aside from game two of their match against Lead by Example. So I actually believe that in that game... Lead by example, ran Misfortune and Nami. Let me look really quickly. No, they ran Caitlyn and Nami, but still. I think they're picking that Nami, thinking that My Little Pony might not know how to deal with it. Although it does also fit into their AoE comp. They have a lot of AoE CC to hold people down for that Misfortune Alls. We see Vlad now coming out for My Little Pony. Yeah, and we see an excellent opportunity for the front lines, both engaging with that AoE CCC and also disengaging with NAMI. So that might be a good tool that they're going to be able to use against the Holy Braille Thresh of Doom. Yeah, Thresh of Doom is probably going to be right. Um, I feel like the tables have sort of turned a little bit. Now it's going to be front lines looking for those fights. And if they get a bad fight, obviously looking to run away very quickly from those fights with the large amount of disengage they have for it. And I think purple team going to have a bit harder of a time unless they land a good thresh hook. We saw this, I believe, in game one of 2-1 Gaming versus Team Durgan, where uh, 2 one ran the thresh bot lane. Or no, Team Durgan ran the thresh bot lane. And it came down a lot to, will they land the hook? Will they land the hook? Will they land the hook? And they landed the hook, and they won the game. But at this point, I'm not really certain that this game is as clear-cut off of the pick screen as it was last game. Last game, it was sort of predictable that would, what would happen. I don't really want to say that, because I don't want to take away from either side's play in that game. Pony played very well, and Frontlines had a lot of points where even when they probably necessarily shouldn't have won a fight, they just did anyways. So... Things are a lot less clear-cut this time, and I think the most interesting note is this is the first time we've seen, aside from his very first game in this tournament, we've seen Cillian on a sort of more damagey top laner. He's run Shen once, Yorick three times, Cho'Gath once. He's been on those sort of tanky, farmy, stay up there all day until you need me to hit a button and come down to you sort of champions. And this time he's playing more of a actually get in there and kill things champion so it's going to be interesting to see the difference in play style there yeah definitely and i know that he picked up that teleport i don't recall seeing that utilized uh, uh, very many times last game so hopefully we see something exciting going on in for example bottom lane with that awesome early teleport now one thing i want to touch on uh misfortune running barrier just pretty normal but Sivir running barrier as well. She's relying very heavily on that spell shield. If she gets CC'd while her spell shield's on cooldown, she's completely screwed. She doesn't have that cleanse to get out of, say, the stun portion of Nautilus knockup. It's actually not that well known, but Nautilus's ultimate has two different phases to it. It has a knockup effect of half a second and then a stun, I, I believe, a second to a second and a half. I think it scales with levels. You can cleanse the stun off, but you can't cleanse the knockup. So you can very easily mitigate the amount of damage she's going to be able to do in that time. But she doesn't have any way of dealing with that. She doesn't have any way of dealing with the Nami stun. I think it counts as a stun regardless of what happens, but I'm not entirely certain if it's cleansable in the same way, because it has this weird knock-up uh, visual effect on it. She doesn't have any way of dealing with any of that. She's going to be relying very heavily on her spell shield to keep herself safe, and when that's on cooldown, that's when my uh, frontline's going to have to look to do something. Definitely. As we get into the delay here a little bit, I want to talk about... The League of Legends Rising Stars series, it is a circuit or a league or a tournament for the average player. It, we have two divisions, one which is bronze, silver, and another that is platinum, gold. And players are separated into these divisions so that they can form teams, compete, and have a real shot at the end of season tournament. This season we actually have a very interesting prize. We have 
first and second place will be allowed to scrim off of, or I'm sorry, against Cloud9 or Velocity Esports, the LCS competitors. So very exciting there as we get into the loading screen. And if you're interested in something like that, definitely sign up because it is a lot of fun. It is. I'm looking very much forward to le- next year. Unfortunately, pro- uh, no, next year, next season, unfortunately, probably won't be able to cast when we inevitably go to the finals of the tournament next year. So <laughs> have to say that because I know Narwhals in the chat will probably get a kick out of it. But uh, it is quite a bit of fun. Uh, it's sort of still shaping up a bit. So now is your real chance to get in sort of on the ground floor while things are really taking off. The amount of growth that we've seen over this past season has been immense. We've seen so many more people. When I first signed up with my old team, we saw a few teams that were fairly active and roughly the same group of people. Now there's just so many that it's almost hard to keep track of now. Yes, definitely. And it honestly, the Season 2 tournament has been the most interesting by far. Season 1 was more or less stomps all across the board, but Season 2 has really had some close games, and we've seen some interesting tactics going down, so I'm definitely interested to see how this is going to pan out um, this game, not only, and also in the coming seasons. Yeah, I mean, if any of you get a chance once this live is over, go take a look over on our other Twitch channel, LRSS1, and look up the uh, VODs for 2-1 Gaming TGG versus Team Durgan. That was... I cast that last night. It was the best match I've ever casted in my entire time doing this. I've been casting for probably about a year at this point, and it was easily the best one I've ever seen as I was completely shocked you know I was expecting to sort of come in and see this usual bronze silver level it's a bit slow a bit neither team knows what to do but both teams were able to put in a really good effort and it was a very back and forth game I believe in both games it was very rare to see a gold lead above one and a half thousand in either direction and they both lasted about an hour each so if you have a couple of hours a few hours to sit down and watch the entire thing I highly recommend it definitely and um <clears throat> meanwhile we have on LRSS1 I think we have Lead by example, facing off against another team in the loser's bracket. They have been a very strong contender, but lost early to Pony, so I'd be interested to see if they show up in the semifinals. Yeah, that was uh, Fallback Gaming currently in the losing bracket. It's actually fairly interesting. Three out of the four teams left came from the same part of the winner's bracket, so we did have a bit of a side of death. Frontlines is the one that didn't come from that side of the bracket and is now being forced to sort of prove themselves against the kind of champions of the bracket of doom that is my little pony i mean my little pony has their first match in this tournament they beat lead by example 2-1 second game they beat fallback gaming 2-0 and now they're 1-0 up on the last team remaining front line so this is a very important match as we go into game number two Definitely, and I have to apologize if some of those voices are in Korean. That is my fault. Didn't realize that was on. Um, but as we get into the game here, it looks like both teams are playing very defensively. Thresh actually warding for the Dragon, and MF almost able to take out that ward. That is a fabulous early ward there. Yeah, that's one of my favorite ones to place myself. Usually I try and sneak over and... <sighs> About a quarter of the time, I managed to miss it completely and get very, very frustrated. S- referred to as the Scar Award off of that one time. He tried to place it and managed to land one on each side of it without actually getting it in the bush. But it's actually fairly easy to land, but it's a very, very powerful one to have at this point. It completely shuts down any invade coming through that tri bush. So we're going to see both sides being a bit defensive at this point, just sort of guarding around their blue buffs, and not really much. Misfortune and Nami taking double golems. And I think that's going to be about it for right now, as we just sort of wait for everyone to get into lane and for the action to start. So same same question as last time, I suppose. Uh, Do you think that we're going to see any early level ganks here coming off from the junglers? Uh, Nautilus, I would not expect to see anything from until at least level 3, possibly level 4. Uh, Hecarim just took a lot of damage to his blue buff. If you look just over at his health bar, he's got 
reasonably low with it. I believe he did go smiteless, but so it's not too much of a big deal because he'll be able to just go take that red buff. But I don't think you'll necessarily see anything. He's going for that red buff now. You might see him come into this top lane. I believe actually they did have a lane swap on frontline gaming side. They have sent Herf Jones on that Kha'Zix up top, and they have sent Reruff on Malphite down to the mid lane to face off against Jace. So I think that's probably the smart move for them at this point. And a good dodge there from Nami on that hook. They took some early damage, but they're just waiting it out to see if they can hit level 2 and get something done. But uh, Severe and Thresh are proving to be a little bit of a formidable opponent as they actually hit level 2 um, about the same time. So no real action going on here at bottom lane just quite yet. Yeah, and you don't really have that really, really strong level 2 all-in that you did with Leona last game. I mean, Thresh can do quite a bit at level 2. He gets his hook, gets his flay, gets on someone, and hopefully gets a kill. But it's a lot harder to get that than it is. The cast time for a death sentence can be a very, very strong giveaway if the bush you're standing in is warded, which they managed to get that ward way down at the end here. I actually do not know how they managed to get up that far in ward. I guess it took a while for Sivir and Thresh to get into lane, so they just got as far up as they can, but it's going to be hard for him to do anything, because he's going to have to, unless he can avoid really telegraphing what he's doing at any point in time. Yeah, and we have some really good damage coming on here top uh, onto Vin Sanity. Or, I'm sorry, Herf Jones. <laughs> um <clears throat> It seems like even though that gank didn't pick up a kill, it was somewhat effective, and it is going to allow uh, Cillian to maybe get some zoning power in. Yeah, I mean, Cillian doing pretty well so far. He seems fairly versatile in this champion pool, just based on what we've seen. He hasn't really had a bad game so far, and that's always something very valuable to have. Uh, Nautilus coming in, standing in that bush, I think they thought it was worded, but it wasn't really. They just sort of naturally back, because we see Hecarim coming into mid lane. And we see the knockup going on to Malphite, but he's able to more or less just walk away from this one. The Ignite blown, wow, coming off at Jace, but a little bit premature. Maybe just wanted to get it off uh, cooldown so that he's able to pick up that uh, passive 5 AD, 5 AP, if he picked up that mastery. Indeed, he did, because you can see that 5 AP on him at this point. 5 AP, obviously not that important, but that 5 AD can make a very large difference, especially against that armor that Malphite already has. Malphite already with 69 armor at this point in time at level 5, as we see Nautilus coming in, missing the hook and sort of walking away. So far, we've had a couple of ganks um, around the map, but nothing too terribly scary. I'd be interested to see which lane is going to pick up first blood. Um... The lanes are pretty even at this point. The CS is pretty dang close, and uh, we see just the beginnings of some items picked up by Malphite, and he actually picks up a Doran's ring. Do you think he's going to end up going, like, straight AP or tank AP? Or? I think he's looking to go aggressive on this Jace right now. I think he's going to try and do, make something happen within the next couple of minutes when his ultimate comes up. The question is going to be what Jace buys. I think you'll probably see Jace pick up a... Tier of the Goddess or something like that. Jace does have a bit of an advantage in farm. But I'm not entirely certain I agree with the Doran's Ring pickup. I feel like he's sort of committing to making something happen very soon. The health is nice, but it's not quite as much as, say, if you were to pick up another cloth armor or something like that. It's not going to help as much against Jace, even if you picked up, like, I don't know. I'm not really sure I agree with it, but I think you're going to look to see him a bit aggressive. And we haven't really seen any spectacular hooks coming here off bot lane. Maybe just looking to farm, but that is a little bit dangerous considering how powerful MF is in team fights. And again, when you were saying in the loading screen, you know, the front lines has a really powerful team comp, and My Little Pony has a little bit of a mismatch, kind of strange thing going on here, so I was hoping to see that they would make something happen in the laning phase. Yeah, I think what you're going to see My Little Pony trying to do in the long term is if they get enough, enough an advantage, what they're going to do is they're just going to group up as five and they're going to try and barrel roll down a lane as we see a gank coming in bot lane. And we see Thresh forced to flash out of that and just a lot of damage coming off onto them, but Severe walks away with really not, not being touched at all, so um, not 
terribly effective, but just maybe a little mini scare for them, considering they didn't have very good ward coverage there. Yeah, it's worth noting, it's seven and a half minutes in, we have not yet seen First Blood, but My Little Pony already out to a 700 gold advantage just off of the farm difference. Mid lane, you got 13 up for Jace, bot lane, you got 11 up for Sivir. So if those increase over time, it's going to be very, very scary. Definitely. We do see some action in bot lane. Yeah, we have the exhaust going down onto MF, and Thresh is just whacking on her, but um, not able to pick up a kill. Maybe a little bit of waste of the summoners, just because they're now going to have to contend with Nami, um, who actually actually has her exhaust on cooldown as well. I think I might have missed that. Yeah, she did place it on Sivir in that fight about the same time that Misfortune got exhausted, and I believe that's why you didn't see either side fall. I think if either exhaust hadn't come out, you probably would have seen the kills. We see Nautilus moving towards top now, maybe looking to make something happen on this Vlad. And we see the jump going off from Kha'Zix onto Vlad, and Nautilus is here. He is a little bit low, so we might be able to pick up a kill. Beautiful flash coming off from Vlad, but a double flash after him. And man, they are able to pick up that first blood onto Herf Jones. Wow, holy cow. Yeah, that was a bit of a misplay, I feel. Meanwhile, we have the Malphite red. ultimate coming down onto Hecarim, and he does go down. Probably got a little bit too brave by going in for that invade. You know, the ward coverage coming off of them was pretty good, but uh, my uh, front lines just had great ward coverage as well. Yeah, front lines did manage to make something happen there. It's very good, and that's actually going to be very helpful because Misfortune just picked up that red buff, and they're pretty much even on damage itself. You have Thorn's Blade Boots, BF Sword from both sides of the lanes, just sort of the same usual song and dance, you know, from both sides. So what you're going to see is Misfortune might now be able to put a bit more pressure back onto Sivir and maybe start to pull this lane back around with that pickup. And we see the knight go down on a Malphite flat, or I'm sorry, ultimates away, but actually gets knocked back and a beautiful Q picks up that kill. That was the weirdest looking knockback I've seen in quite a while, too. He dashed forwards and sort of stopped halfway and then flew backwards towards the siege creep. So, <laughs> a good pickup by Jace. Very intelligent, knowing when to be aggressive there. Uh, Malphite has quite a bit of. Well, I don't want to say quite a bit of, but has a fairly significant amount of AP off of those two Doran's rings. So, he's able to be a bit aggressive. But on the other hand, if. Jace has already reached a point where Jace can just jump on him and blow him up, then things are very, very bleak looking for Malphite at this point. Yes, and the farm differential has just increased dramatically, so it might come into play here where, it, as you said, he didn't make anything happen quite in the time frame that he had, so he's going to be set back even more. Yeah, and I mean, even despite that kill also up in top lane, uh, Cillian's hanging in there completely fine. He's not at all phased by it. He's three CS behind at this point, but he's not really having too much of a problem with it. Did go for that Hextech Revolver first. That's a bit of a surprise. I would have expected him to go for a Seeker's Arm Guard fairly early to combat the attack damage off of Kha'Zix, but it's working out well for him. He's able to just sort of farm underneath his turret at this point. And we might see a gank coming in on bottom. They were able to clear a ward with a pink just so that Nautilus could show up, but they are aware of the River Ward, so they might have to do a straight on lane gank, and it seems like Holy Braille and Spaz are playing just a little bit too safely for anything to happen here. Yeah, and it looks like they're going to try and make something happen. Do not manage to interrupt a recall, so nice try, not quite, and we're seeing Kha'Zix now forced in a very interesting way around the river by both Hecarim and Vlad. Definitely. So I noticed that we have a good pink down here from Holy Braille onto the dragon. Do you think that we'll start to see a team fight anytime soon over that, or are we going to stick to the laning phase for a while longer? I don't really think you'll see too much of a team fight. I think you'll see one team look to kill someone and then go for it. I think you'll probably see at some point in time Hecarim trying to make something happen, and then My Little Pony will go for it. My Little Pony does have that pink ward, but... Uh, Frontlines has that ward in the pit that the pink ward can't see, so it's very And the Hecarim Ultimate comes off onto Nami, and she is forced to flash, but gets hooked by Thresh, and that is a surefire pickup of that kill. They are going to back off of that, but definitely a nice pickup there for, uh, I believe, Hecarim. Yeah, and I think we'll see 
Uh, my Little Pony trying to shove this out, maybe go for Dragon, but Kha'Zix is roamed to mid lane now, and they know he's there. I actually think you might see them go for that tower now, because they know Kha'Zix is in mid. I mean, there's a good ultimate from, um, coming off of Sinrio, uh, just because clearing that minion wave kind of prevented the three of them from pushing onto that bottom turret. They are going to continue to push, and Misfortune's a little bit low on mana, but it should just be fine for her to farm until her support is able to make it back to lane. Yeah, she... Oh, the oh, beautiful hook gets off onto Thresh, and the Nautilus ultimate goes down onto Thresh, but MF is just wreaking havoc kiting from safe range away, and it looks like Holy Braille might go down here. The exhaust goes down onto Nautilus, and Holy Braille makes it out safely. Wow, very well played on the part of My Little Pony. Yeah, that was a very, very good turnaround from them <laughs> after Nautilus came in. They just sort of weren't in a position where anything was going to be able to happen to them. They knew that Misfortune was alone. Misfortune left herself a bit open to that hook. That hook landed, and that's sort of been the story of the game as far as Thresh went. Nautilus did get a bit greedy there going in for that. He was sort of alone. Misfortune couldn't really fight. I think if he'd have dropped his ultimate and then not really gone for the kill, he would have lived, and it would have been pretty fine. But... Overall, I think that definitely went in My Little Pony's favor. Yes, and we see everyone just kind of roaming around, picking up their own buffs, and pushing onto their turrets. There is a lot of pressure coming out from My Little Pony at the moment in all three lanes as they are looking to push up. I'm hoping that they're able to convert their lead soon into an objective to start pushing down some of those turrets. Yeah, they definitely need to start making stuff happen. They have enough of an advantage that they need to keep that pressure up. They can't allow the other side a chance to farm back into this game. Right now, they have them a bit by the throat. They need to really make stuff happen and keep the pressure up. And it looks like they're going to go for a dive in bot lane. So in the bottom lane, Nautilus meets all four of My Little Pony, unfortunately, um, is definitely dead there. And at top lane, we actually had a really good gank coming off from Reroof and Herf Zones onto Cillian. He does go down, but this is going to be a definite dragon for My Little Pony, despite losing that top laner. Yeah, we saw that, and I think we're going to see that top uh, turret traded away for that dragon, so... It probably was a fairly good response by uh, front lines. I know it probably wasn't really intended to happen that way, although if My Little Pony gets this mid turret, then it's definitely not good for him, and I believe they will. So disregard what I just said, My Little Pony definitely came out way ahead on that one now. Yes, oftentimes the top turret is um, considered about even when it comes to taking a dragon, but with them at mid turret, it's a definite uh, plus for My Little Pony. Yeah, mid turret's so valuable too. It's easily the most valuable of all the tier one turrets, just because the amount of it, the amount it opens up the entire map to your team. So they really are in a great position to start to look to make things happen and move towards closing out this game. It's going to be it's going to take a bit of work for front lines too. Uh, start to turn this around, but I think it's definitely possible at this point. It's a bit too early to call it, but they need to start making things happen. It looks like My Little Pony wants to pick up this turret, but um, they actually are going to back off because they know that their lane partners are returning. Kha'Zix is roaming down, but going to step over a ward, so I don't think we'll see anything happening quite yet uh, as far as this goes. Yeah, I think you might even see Cillian try and force down this top turret for it. Uh... Frontlines just showed all five members of their team down in the bottom lane, so I believe he gets that mostly for free. And they sort of fell out and didn't really take advantage of the fact that Vlad's still pushing top. So Vlad should be able to get this turret, and in response, Frontlines doesn't really get anything. So really good pushes coming off here of My Little Pony, really picking up those objectives, but they're going to have to keep it up if they want to win. But meanwhile, we have Kazus jumping onto Vlad. He is getting taken kind of low, similar to the first fight. He blows his ultimate, but is he going to be able to survive? I am not sure about this one. He flashes, but Kazakh follows up with a flash and is able to pick up that kill with barely a sliver of health. Meanwhile, mid lane Malphite and Nautilus picking up another awesome kill with their typical roaming um, onto Vinsanity. Yeah, that was just a bit 
awkward for the uh, Vlad. He doesn't really have any armor to speak of to deal with that Kha'Zix. He has a bit of health from that haunting guys and his passive AP into health passive, but he doesn't really have much to defend himself against that Kha'Zix, and I feel like going for the haunting guys second was a bit of a mistake. I think I probably would have definitely gone for Seeker's Arm Guard second or something similar just to get that armor, make myself able to survive if that Kha'Zix shows up if I'm planning on staying around, and especially now that they're getting out onto the map, he has to worry about Kha'Zix and Misfortune as well. Yes, and <clears throat> that lead that they are putting onto Herf Jones is definitely going to play a part coming up in these next team fights. We get the Nautilus hook onto Thresh, and he blows the ultimate to get out of that. But Malphite has shown up, and the Nami ultimate goes off here. The bottom lane is separated, so Severia is starting to get hit on by Malphite, but all five members of the front lines are here, so we'll see if they look to push down this turret and if My Little Pony can react in time. This could be very good, or this could be very bad, and I think it's going to be very good if they keep it up. I think they can get this turret pretty much uncontested, but the question is, is Jace going to be able to push down that mid turret in response? Yes, I'm not sure that would be a fair trade, but they are going to pick up this turret, and definitely Holy Braille and Spaz backing off as they are required to. Um, I think that we might see Dragon Spawn here within the next couple minutes, so that bottom lane turret going down is going to be a definite helpful thing for the front lines to control that area. Yes, but they trade out one, possibly two for it if they get this top lane turret as well, and this has been sort of the definition of what My Little Pony has been and doing. And Exhaust goes down onto Herf Jones, but Holy Brow is getting taken dangerously low with the Ignite and the Health Pot, but thankfully Kha'Zix gets that reset, is able to hop away, but Severe gets a beautiful Flash Q. Oh my gosh, that was just... I guess that was expected, but too good, too good. Yeah, that was very, very well played by My Little Pony, and that's just how they've been working these this game for the most part, and this whole match really, is every time Frontlines has gotten into a place where they can make something happen, My Little Pony has been making something happen in a return that's even worse, so, I mean, Frontlines just hasn't been able to come back, because every single window they get, I mean, they start to try and jump through it, and My Little Pony just slams it shut on their fingers every time, so bit of pain for them as we see the gold leads only about 3,000 but just looking at the turrets 3 to 2 and both mid lane turrets down uh, My Little Pony has a lot of map control in the top half of the map and that's going to come into play in about 5 minutes or so when you'll probably start to see them thinking about Baron so I noticed that we have um, not really a lot of tankiness coming off of My Little Pony at the moment. Do you think that's going to hinder them in these next upcoming team fights, or are they really ahead enough that they can build just pretty much straight damage except for that locket that just went down there? Uh, they might be strong enough to build just damage. I think that Vlad, now that he has that Seeker's Arm Guard, is tanky enough to withstand anything that gets thrown at him. I think that Sivir obviously, you know, AD carry doesn't really build that much defense early. I think Jace is fine with it. I think Hecarim's fine with it. But I think they're trading away two turrets here. And that was a bit of a misplay by Pony. So that's what Frontlines needs to have happen. They need to have that And the ultimate goes down right onto Jace here. The MF ultimate picks up that kill. Or, I'm sorry, Nautilus picks up the kill. Gets a good hook onto Hecarim and is able to pick up that one as well. Vlad is going to pull, but I don't think he's going to be able to escape this one. Throws down the ultimate and actually is doing a good job of kiting. Thresh shows up to the fight just to save him. Get a good hook onto Harf Jones. Blows the ultimate and he is going to go down. So I know they lost two members of that fight for My Little Pony, but it was pretty good of them to pick up Harf Jones in return. Yeah, they did manage to pick up that kill, which is nice and helps them out a lot for that next... Ooh... So we're going to pause. Uh, that next 20 seconds while... Well, the 20 second window they'll have where Jace and Hecarim are up and Kha'Zix isn't. That will be very helpful for My Little Pony to changing how this works. But... That was really well played by Frontlines, more than anything. They saw the Thresh and Sivir in bot lane and the Vlad in top lane, they're like, we're going to barrel down this mid lane and take two turrets, and they did. And that's what they need to be. They need to be able to be decisive at this point. They need to take these advantages, because, I mean, like what I was saying about how every time they get a bit of an advantage, My Little Pony 
smashes it down their fingers. This time they need to just get through the window faster, basically, is the way you counter that. You need to be very decisive as you see My Little Pony managing to pick up the dragon off of this. And that seems like it is a little bit brave considering they didn't have a pink ward there and um, it seems like the ward coverage coming off from Yaya Puff just was not enough to prevent that dragon there. Yeah, I'm not even certain if with ward coverage they could have prevented it. They were all sort of in a need to go back and that's I believe why My Little Pony just ran straight for Dragon. They're like, okay, they're all back in base. Let's go take this. We can sort of mitigate a lot of the damage that just happened from the fact that we just lost two mid turrets basically for free. And, I mean, it's not really bad that that happened for front lines, but I don't know. I think that was a good trade, the two turrets for the one kill and a Dragon. And actually, I believe they got two kills of their own as well. So, I'm looking. I'm feeling a lot more optimistic about front lines right now than I was about three or four minutes ago. And we do see <clears throat> Nautilus picking up the locket, a really good defense item on both sides. So that'll definitely help to mitigate some of the strong damage coming off the carries, such as Herf Jones as well as Spaz. Um, do you think that they're going to be picking up any of the other ore items pretty soon here, or are they pretty much good? I, would too, I wouldn't be too surprised seeing Age of the Legion come down at some point. I believe that Thresh might be working towards that. You see that cloth armor and rejuvenation bead. As and we, we have the flash the engage oh. coming off a of Malphite onto Thresh. A great pickup, but the Nami ultimate is doomed for Holy Braille, and the MF ult is able to do some damage. The Vlad is initiated on because he is alone, but his ultimate gets off, and he gets out of that fight alive. We are going to have a reverse engage from My Little Pony on MF. Sinrio is taking Dangerous Leo, is taking barrier but it's just too much damage holy cow we have the chase going after nautilus and they are going to pick up that kill with the jace q man that was a wonderful turnaround from my little pony maybe a little bit too audacious of an engage from front lines it was good and then they ended up sort of underneath the tower with a vlad ult on them and that's just something you never want to have happen that was a very very good ultimate that we saw come off of Cillian there as he just turned around caught four members of uh, front lines in that. Jace managing to come in and pick up a quadra kill with Sivir blasting away as well. I mean, the two of them just clean it up very easily with that damage buff off of the Vladimir ult. And we are going to see them almost want to pick up mid turret, walk up and realize they don't quite have the damage or the tank enough to pick that up. So they're just going to kind of wreak havoc in the jungle. Meanwhile, we see front lines is gathering up and all coming together. So I don't know if they're just going to go straight for a push mid or maybe go for a Baron in the hopes that... Um, my Little Pony's backing off. Yeah, I wouldn't be too surprised if we see them move up towards Baron, but I don't think it's safe for them to do so. Uh, it would be a call I wouldn't expect them to... I wouldn't. It wouldn't be unexpected if they tried and make that call, but I think it might be a bad idea. And I feel the most important note off of that fight was Jace got a quadra kill. Jace has 2,000 gold that he can go back and spend now, and Jace is going to be even more terrifying than he was a couple of minutes ago as he's picking up that blue buff as well. So I think what you'll see My Little Pony do is they'll start grouping up as five people, saying we're going to take this tower, and you are going to have to either try and fight us, or you are going to lose your entire health bar to these Jace Qs that are coming down constantly. So you're just going to see that probably going to see a siege from here on out and it should go very very heavily in my little pony's favor so you're going to have to see front lines trying to catch something a bit out of position and just go on it at this point in time front lines just needs to be able to pull the trigger when the time comes if they aren't able to do that then there's probably not too much hope for them at this point we see just a little bit of skirmishing going on here in the beginning as they get ready to perhaps get a team fight. And I'm afraid that for the front lines, this team fight might not be a good idea because they are going to get poked down. But just kind of returning some of that, and the thresh hook barely misses Nami. That would have been a fabulous engage, but while that's on cooldown, it might be a good time for front lines to go in. It looks like they are going to chase after this and slowly back off. So just kind of doing the mid dance that we typically see. Um, back and forth as the upper and bottom lanes push in the favor of My Little Pony. So front lines is going to have to back off here, and this might be a good opportunity for My Little Pony to make a team fight happen. Yeah, we see them pink warding it up. I think if they were to just have Thresh go back or 
even Hecarim go back, buy an Oracles, they could just sweep out Baron and then a couple minutes later take it. Pretty much for free. But at this point, they don't really have any reason to go for Baron, so they're going to try and make a fight happen. They're going to try and make a fight happen on a turret because that's going to be the best objective for them. They can't stand around Baron and do it and poke the other team down. It just doesn't work that way. They they have to, at this point, be focused on towers, and that's what we're seeing. We're seeing five of them group up, and I think you're going to see a very, very dangerous siege in either mid or bot. And we'll see if um, the front lines can respond to that bot lane push that might we might be seeing pretty soon here after they pick up red as a group. Um... They have some ward coverage, but not very much. They're actually in the dark as where My Little Pony is until they show themselves at mid. And it looks like the whole team is here, so I don't know that they want to chase after that. They might just want to let that go, but um, the lanes are pushing, I believe, somewhat in their favor, so it might be a good time to play this skirmish. Ooh, that one Jace Q just took off a third of Kha'Zix's health and a quarter of Misfortune, so... Ugh, that's going to be brutal to watch. It's al it's almost painful to me because I've been in this situation many times before where you just have that Jace standing there constantly throwing the uh, accelerated shock blast at you and then they... It's just... It's a bad feeling at this point and they need to be in a position to do something about it. They need to be in a position where they can... Well, it looks like Malphite's looking to make something happen but I'm not certain they will. And it looks like Holy Bro might be a little behind. The Malphite slow goes off into that. Nautilus engages and the Thresh ultimate comes down. But the MF ultimate gets quite a few people. And Severe is definitely going to get taken down here. I'm sorry. Picks up a kill onto Kha'Zix. And the beautiful kiting going on uh, as the AD carries go down. And we have kind of a skirmish going on with Thresh still alive. And Nautilus picking up a death. Um, the hook goes onto a... Well, a melee made it. Minion. But, um... Uh, we are going to chase down Malphite and probably pick up the top turret here, as that is a 2 for 4 in the favor of My Little Pony. Yeah, Frontline started that fight out really well. They got a good catch on Thresh, but Sinrio ended up way in the middle of the other team. He ended up having two people on him, even in the back, and in response he ran forwards. And what happened then was he was in the middle of the entire... Uh, My Little Pony team, and once they noticed that, they just turned on him and took him out. But the important part of that fight, and the thing that Frontlines did very, very intelligently and very smartly, was Kha'Zix jumped in and blew Jace up instantly. That's what they need to be able to do in these fights. They need to be able to take out Jace immediately. And at least for the next couple of minutes, while well, he's still more of a threat in a fight than Sivir is, Sivir will soon be the person they need to be blowing up. But Kha'Zix needs to go in get rid of one of those major damage sources, and then they can win the fight. But what happened instead was one of their major damage sources got taken out fairly quickly because Misfortune just ended up a bit in the wrong place at the wrong time. And it looks like they're going to be able to pick up an easy dragon. Um, they have some really good ward coverage deep into the front lines' territory, so they're able to keep track of where they are. Um, we do see some pink wards coming off of uh, Yaya Puff, but I wouldn't be surprised if we start to see an oracle is picked up by either of the supports uh, as we try and go for some things along the lines of Baron. Yeah, and that pink ward, actually... I want to really compliment this on uh, Frontline's side. They've been very good at placing these wards inside the Baron Pit where the common pink ward spots aren't spotting them. So there's this ward inside Baron Pit. And if you look at the vision on the uh, My Little Pony side, it just magically disappears really quickly. And it's pretty much right on the edge. If that ward was half an inch to the right, it would be in vision. So very well done by them in keeping that ward on there and taking advantage of the fact that they're using pink wards for counter vision. And the threshold comes on to Malphite, but they aren't going to go on to that because that is definitely a dangerous person to engage on. Yeah, but Yaya Puff on Nami getting taken down to a quarter health by just a couple, one Sivir Q and one Jace Blast, and that's That might really... be a turret. Uh, I think she'll be back in time to help defend, but uh, front lines needs to make something happen here. They can't just sit back and wait. They sit back and wait. They lose this turret pretty easily. So we do see the poke game going on here. 
But uh, the Minion Wave for My Little Pony is quite a ways away, so just kind of milling about. We do have bot lane at least pushing in the favor of Frontline, so um, hopefully that'll help them just a little bit. Nobody's going to lose a tower if we fight here, so uh, the only thing that's for stake is that turret and maybe even Baron. Yeah, and the Shock Blasts just aren't landing onto champions at this point. They really need them to land onto champions, but they keep either hitting minions or just missing entirely. So, Frontline's playing this very well, not getting caught by those. That is another way that they have to sort of win this little siege, is they have two choices. They can either be really good at avoiding the Jace poke, or they can turn around and fight. And I feel at this point, it's getting to be a bit of a scary proposition for them to turn around and fight. So... We'll see what happens. If uh, My Little Pony starts landing stuff on any anything, even if it's Thresh Hook, if it's a few uh, Jace Blasts, you're going to see them take this tower. And as I say that, they managed to take Yaya Puff down to half health again. So the boat game is just going on here. Uh, as My Little Pony just has all the time in the world to kill as they hang around just poking down the enemy team. Not really concerned about bot lane at this point, just wanting to get that mid lane turret and we might see an engage sometime soon here. Uh, Holy Barrel is caught out by Nautilus's hook, and we see some good damage coming off from MF. The ultimate comes down onto double members of the MMB team, including Spaz, who is taken low and taken out, but the Vladimir ultimate goes down. Very good ultimate on his part, and MF Sinreal is just going to be taken dangerously low, kited down, and taken out by, I believe, Jace. So unfortunately they left Jace alive in this fight, and that's why it will be a 3 for 4 in the favor of My Little Pony. Yeah, another quadra kill for Jace, and a lot of what happened there was just uh, they sort of initiated the fight while Kha'Zix wasn't there. Kha'Zix was off clearing out top lane, he got back in a bit late, and again, Sinrio just sort of in a bit of an odd position in that fight. I don't want to really sound like I'm picking on him, but he ended up running directly past the Vladimir over his pool and it just he got taken down for it there's I don't know he has to be hitting something that he can safely hit and I feel like he's been in these past couple of fights not in a safe position to be doing anything yeah so we do see um my little pony backing off after taking quite uh a lot of assets away from the front lines as the gold gap is widened. So at this point we have front lines in a really rough situation. Is there any specific strategy or items or anything that you think the front lines could do to help put them back in the game at this point? Uh, normally with my old team when we got in this position we sort of curled up in a ball in hopes that the pain would stop. But um, <laughs> <laughs> no I'm kidding. Uh, I feel like Turtling is not an option at this point. They have Jace, Sivir, Vladimir. They cannot turtle against this team, and it's really hard for them to win a straight-up fight at this point. It's getting a bit to the point where they're in the position they were last game, where they need to hope they can catch something out, but they can't because they don't have enough control over the map to do anything. I don't want to sound like I'm sort of saying that there's no hope for them, but I'm a bit at a loss for how I would deal with this personally. I think definitely getting some more armor down on the team, getting an Aegis to Legion will help significantly. They've sort of left that to Nami. She doesn't really have the gold to do that. And they might catch out Jace here and a beautiful set of ultimates on him. The GA is going to pop, but I'm pretty sure that this is over for him. A really good shutdown, and My Little Pony is a herdin at this moment, so that gives uh, Frontlines a little bit of time to breathe and hopefully to back off some of these minions and maybe make a little bit of a push. Yeah, I don't feel that they can make a uh, push to really do much of anything until that inhibitor is back up. I feel like the death timer for Jace just isn't long enough to allow him to say go for Baron, and Malphite might be getting taken out here in a couple seconds. Oh, the sharks are circling down in bot lane. Yes, and he is uh, way far out here, realizes that he is going to be in trouble, and Spaz actually blows the ultimate a little bit prematurely. They are searching for him in the wrong way, so um, they actually completely miss him, which is quite an amusing chase going on there, and he's just going to walk away to safety. 
A very good job by that, but they will pick up the dragon. I know it's not really counting for much at this point. We're 35 minutes in. I mean, a thousand gold isn't going to be a huge, massive, massive difference. I think what you'll see My Little Pony do at this point is they'll get all the lane shoving and they'll go to Baron while that inhibitor is down. And I'm not entirely certain if Frontlines can afford to try and stop them. I think if Frontlines goes into stop, and there's as much of a chance of them just outright losing a fight and losing the game trying to stop them. But on the other hand, I'm not certain they can afford to not fight them, because I'm pretty sure that with the Baron, then, I mean, the Siege gets even more powerful. You look at the AD and the AP and all those stats, but what people don't look at from Baron is the regeneration, which is the best thing in the world for sieging. And immediately they know the Baron is going down, as I notice that... Um... Reroof is actually bottom. The My Little Pony backs off. The MF Ultimate goes down, but he is too deep in. Severe blows that uh, barrier in order to try to survive, and the exhaust goes down on the Thresh. The Vlad Ultimate comes down, but the kiting is just too powerful on this one. They're actually going to pick up a kill onto Cillian, and this is a beautiful team fight in the favor of the front lines. Yeah, I was watching it at first, and I was pretty sure, okay, Sinra's getting a bit low, I'm not entirely certain Frontline's gonna win this one, and then they sort of did, but if Cillian can pull this off, and he might be able to with the healing off of his Spirit of the Spectral Wraith and his Transfuse, not able to pick up the Penta, but does manage to live, so it's actually 4 for 4, and I don't believe Nautilus can fight Vlad at this point, he might be able to do something with that tower in bot lane. And it looks like My Little Pony is actually going to go and push, even though he's so low. Um, we do have Home Guard coming off a of Yellow Beast, and a little bit dangerous for Zillion. Um, but it looks like he's just fine, just going to walk away without a problem. And all three lanes are pushing in the favor of My Little Pony, really, really hurting them out there. Yeah, I mean, that was a really well-played fight by Frontlines, too, over at Baron, but they weren't able to capitalize on it just because of how amazing that play was by Vlad. I mean, MVP of that fight right there definitely has to be Vlad. He managed to keep himself alive just long enough, grab someone else, Hourglass, almost pick up Nautilus on the way out for the Penta, but not quite. And most importantly, that puts a lot of gold suddenly onto Vlad, who is out of the three sort of carries that you have on uh, my Little Pony side to chase the Sivir. Vlad was hurting the most for gold at that point, and they just gave him a Quadra, so that's going to be very scary for them to deal with. Definitely, and we have a lot of people to contend with now on My Little Pony, so um, the kills <clears throat> are a little more focused on to Herf Jones, so they've got their all their eggs in one basket, but uh, Nautilus is actually going to catch Vlad, and he's just going to pull away, so not a big deal here. Front lines are looking to make a little bit of a push. They did get their inhibitor back up, and top lane is um, doing not too bad, but uh, they might actually back off, because I'm not sure that they're in a position to fight at this moment. I'm fairly certain they aren't, but it looks like they might stick in and try it anyways. Uh, they do have the wards. We have seen now the oracles picked up by Thrash, so they're going to have control over that barren area, it's going to get too dangerous even for front lines to get out there and place wards. So I think this next fight will likely decide how the rest of this game is going to go. I would definitely agree. So um, hopefully we get a good MF ultimate coming off from here, but we do have Thresh going in and gets caught by the Nami Q. Um, really good disengage there by Nami because they were uh, looking for a kill, but unfortunately Reruff might get caught out here. They actually don't want to go on in, and Yellow Beast goes on to Thresh. The MF ultimate comes off, but is ineffective. Hecarim dives onto Sinreal and is actually going to just continue to deal damage, but um, meanwhile we have Nautilus who is going on to Jace, and Malphite is actually trying to catch up to him. But it's uh, not going to be enough. Vlad is going to come in to take out, I believe, uh, Reruff. And uh, there's just so much going on. The exhaust comes down onto Spaz. And they might try and pick up a kill on a Nautilus with their excellent poke and push in. But they are a low enough uh, that Nautilus picks up the hook onto Severe. And both teams are going to back off because it's just kind of a gamble at this point. So uh, despite all the damage that was going down in that fight, we only had one death going onto Holy Braille. And My Little Pony is going to back off, which will give uh, Frontlines a little bit of time to push out those minion waves further. Yeah, that was a very chaotic and scattered sort of fight. It, I had a hard time keeping track of it myself, but what I really noticed in that fight was it felt a couple minutes ago like I was sort of picking on this, and I felt a bit bad about it, but Tenro's positioning in that fight was a lot better than the 
positioning in the past couple of fights. He was keeping himself safe and hitting what he could. Before he was sort of going in almost tunnel visioning on something a bit towards the back. This time I saw him looking like he was going to. I'm sitting there like, he's going to go for it and it's not going to end well. And then he backs off and goes for someone else. And overall, that really helped him. Even though his ultimate missed everyone, he had a lot more effect in that fight because he wasn't just going in and ending up dying. He does pick up the Infinity Edge, so he actually does more damage now than Sivir. Wow, yeah, so that is quite a bit of damage. If you look at the farm, I mean... Jace has been able to stay steadily ahead from Malphite, but uh, Misfortune has overcome Severe's farm um, and is actually doing quite well in that department. So they've got all their eggs um, in one basket on Sinrao and a little bit of Herf Jones, so hopefully they're able to get something done with that. The problem is that that Jace poke is just so strong, and now that he's picked up GA, it's, it's going to be a tough one. Yeah, I believe he had GA for that fight, but it didn't get popped, so that's... One of their priorities has to be get that GA off him at some point. MF has no defense at this point, so she's a lot more vulnerable than her uh, Spaz is with that Guardian Angel up, as we see in Initiate from... And not also comes off onto Hecarim, and it looks like the Thresh ultimate is going to go down. Sinrao is going to try and kite Nautilus around. Is able to get an ultimate onto all three members, and Cillian comes in to wreak the havoc. Unfortunately, that ultimate is going to do too much damage as they try to kite Vlad down. Uh, they actually have Spaz still alive and chasing after them, as well as MF. The beautiful flash from Vlad, but it's not quite enough because the locket is able to save them. This is going to be an inhibitor for My Little Pony. Yes, I think you're going to see him go top and just grab that inhibitor for free as well. They did not get the Guardian Angel off of Jace, so he's pretty much got a second life still. Sivir, they managed to get the Guardian Angel, but didn't manage to take her down. Sinrio got... A little bit forward and ate a couple of hits for it, but managed to take out Sivir and put her in Guardian Angel during that fight. I think if she hadn't been in the revive animation for a lot of that fight, you might have seen uh, Frontline just lose the game right there, but she's going to get caught right here. And wow, Rerif just walks up and is able to kite Spaz um, as she tries to get away, and MF is going to pick up that kill without a problem. Thankfully, we have front lines right there at Baron. They are going to go and go for this. They have good ward coverage, and this might be a good opportunity for the front lines to make a comeback. Uh, unfortunately, Jace is still alive, though, so we're going to see that massive poke and hopefully a Baron seal, but alas, it goes to the front lines. Yeah, that was very, very well played by front lines and that's what they needed at this point they needed to get a good opportunity to go for something like baron and pick that up and sort of stop the bleeding for right now and i don't know if they're necessarily stronger than my little pony but they definitely have a much stronger chance of living through a fight than they did before a lot of what we were seeing before was any time that we had a fight that uh, front line came on top of, they managed to pick off one person and get out. And this time we might be able to see them actually do a bit stronger of a play by uh, front lines if something happens in the near future. I think that gives them a much easier way back into the game. Yeah, and they do have that Baron buff picked up. The middle inhibitor is still down, but they got the wave push out fairly far, so if they wanted to fight they probably could. It'd be a little bit dangerous. I'd be interested to see if they could catch someone out instead, but it looks like they really just want to go for this fight, and at this point, they have such tankiness on Herf Jones and Rerough, and as well as uh, Nautilus, that they have that good, really good front line. So, um, we might see something going on here, and as long as they don't dive, we might see a team fight that isn't completely one-sided. Yeah, and I'm not entirely certain this is what they want to do, though. I don't think they want to be pressuring this turret at this point. I don't think they win it, because I think what happens at this point, if they pressure this turret, they're sieging into Jace, and Jace is going to poke them down, same as it would underneath one of their turrets, except now they're in a part, in a place where Hecarim can ult onto them and not have to worry about a turret shooting him in the head. So, they're going to pick up the dragon off of it, that's going to help them continue to get back into this game, but it's still a long road for them to really get fully even with Pony again. 
Yes, and unfortunately I'm not sure they're going to be able to utilize that Baron buff too much. They are going to be forced to push out bottom, which is going to give My Little Pony the opportunity to go and perhaps ninja that top inhibitor. I do see them kind of spreading out here, and we'll see if they push it or if they just want to go in and take it out. Um, looks like they're going to go for the push, but uh, in, in response, the front lines is pretty much all healed up and ready to contend with them. So I don't think they'll have a chart for this fight, but they won't necessarily have to stand back and take that poke. They'll be able to just initiate and go straight for Jace, for example. Yeah, it's going to be... This next couple of minutes will decide the game fairly easily. I think once you see Baron buff drop, we're going to see it go back to pretty much how it was about five minutes ago where My Little Pony was just continually pressuring, looking to take something, but being very patient about it. I feel like being patient really benefits My Little Pony. I feel like at this point in time, uh, Frontlines is in a place where they need to be the people who are making things happen. They can't wait for opportunities to come to them. They have to make the opportunities on their own or wait for a good mistake they can capitalize on, like that Baron bu the Baron that they took was capitalizing on the mistake off of My Little Pony. That's what they need to be able to do. But My Little Pony doesn't have any reason to do anything than sit back, because even if Malphite gets a bit of farm, it's not going to matter that much. It's just tankiness, tankiness gets outscaled by uh, damage every time. So, yeah. really... And Go ahead. I was just going to say, unfortunately, the ward coverage coming off of front lines is a little bit abysmal, and they're actually going to have a good opportunity to engage here. I believe the Thresh Hook does not land, but um, they are pretty eager on My Little Pony to engage onto something here. So um, I was just going to comment on the ward coverage, unfortunately, is not offensive enough for the front lines to really push out. That's why they're kind of being forced back into their base. Yes, I believe we do have an update from the other channel as well. I believe that Lead by Example has taken out Fallback Gaming. So Fallback Gaming now out of the tournament, and Lead by Example will face the loser of this match in the loser's bracket uh, next round. The winner of this match moves, I believe, directly onto the finals. So a lot at stake here. But, I mean, if you lose this match, you still have a chance. It's not completely out of the question, and I'm looking very much forward to the next match because I know lead by example is a very strong team so no matter what happens you're going to see a very good match coming up next as well as the finals later this evening definitely and at this point I believe we are into the top four so um, the teams will be receiving prizing next game is going to determine third place and then finals both teams will be guaranteed the chance to scrim against C9 and VES so definitely a really interesting opportunity um, it looks like we might see Frontlines taken out here, so I want to see Frontlines versus LBX happening. But we have Nautilus going in on Hecarim, and the Thresh ultimate comes down. Beautiful MF ultimate goes down, but at Malphite is just hounding on to Spaz. The Vlad ult goes down, but MF, or I'm sorry, Severe is just taking too much damage. Her GA does get popped. MF already has her GA and is not having a problem kiting down the rest of the members of My Little Pony. So Zillian gets a good flash here. He is going to get chased. Um, as the team tries to track that guy down, but he might be able to make it away, and I'm not sure that they want to waste the time chasing after this, but there is a good hook from Yellow Beast onto Cillian. He's going to pull around here, and they're going to back off of that. So um, the front lines had a really good fight there, but they're really just going to want to keep doing this, keep pushing out their lanes. That way, maybe they can just get back in the game. Yeah, I feel off of that one, they actually can maybe look to make a play on this inhibitor. They have about 30 seconds until Hecarim's back up, and a further 30 seconds now. Well, it's now 30 seconds, so further 10 seconds after that before Jace and Sivir are back up. So I think they'll probably at least get this inhibitor turret. But a lot of that was Pony getting in a fairly bad position in that fight, and a lot of that was Pony having very bad focus in that fight. They did a lot of damage to a lot of things, but didn't do a lot of damage to anything enough to kill it. So they're going to look to take this inhibitor and get out. Wow, and yes, that was a really good opportunity for the front lines to get back into this. I know that they're still missing a couple of their inhibitor turrets, but um, taking that, that mid lane will give them the opportunity to actually potentially win if they win a team fight and get an ace off of any of the upcoming uh, team fights. Yeah, and I feel like at this point, uh, front lines has gotten themselves a bit back into the game. Pony just hasn't been able to close it out. Uh, 
I feel like Pony's playing this almost a bit sloppily at this point. They've been playing a very, very tight game in every time I've seen them from up until now. So, really, it's not going to be good for them. Although they are managing to take Baron, so this will shift things back in their favor quite a bit. And we might see a team fight going down here, but the Baron is already going to be on My Little Pony. They are ready to fight, so we will see. It looks like an MF ultimate come down, but the Hecarim ults onto Sinrio. Sinrio is going to be able to take Holy Braille almost dangerously low, but the flash goes down, and Spaz is already out of the fight. Holy cow, we have a Hecarim going down, and Sinrio is going to get taken low, but the GA is still up. Zillion gets a really good Zillion, or, uh... Uh, Zanya's off, and Sinreal is able to pick up Vinsanity's kill as well. That was the manliest misfortune positioning I've ever seen in a fight. He flashed into the middle of three of them and lived because he had that Guardian Angel up with just a complete sliver of health. And, I mean, I was quite terrified. It looks like My Little Pony going to surrender, so we're going to go to a Game 3. Very well played on this part of both sides. I'm... It looked like My Little Pony had Frontline completely on the ropes, and they managed to pull it back around. So very, very good play by Frontlines, and we're going to see what happens in game number three and how they change their picks and bans going into this. So we are going to take a brief five-minute break here as we get the lobbies prepared for everybody. But hang tight as we are going to see a very heated match between Pony and uh, Front coming up very soon.
All right, we are back for Champion Select of game number three of Frontlines versus My Little Pony. We see a Jace ban now coming out from Frontlines. Very, very afraid of that after last game of Insanity was just pretty much no on the end. We are seeing the Ezreal ban once again from My Little Pony. Yeah, definitely um, <clears throat> a little bit of an odd ban, but we see the Jace ban coming out, which is not odd at all. We actually had the Frontlines ask in chat, can we ban Jace three times? <laughs> so, uh, a pretty uh, unanimous vote on that one. Um, instantly banned. But it, it, we wonder what that will compromise. Are they going to leave some of the poke open um, for the My Little Pony to pick up some of their more typical champs, like Nidalee? Well, I'm not entirely certain. They might do that. We do see the Hecarim come up, so they're afraid of that. That was doing work on them quite a bit. You see Nautilus now coming out as a ban against Yellow Beast. Yellow Beast on Nautilus last game did a good deal to sort of uh, see about, but I'm not entirely certain what we're going to see off of these bans. We do see a Jarvan ban, so that Nidalee is open, and that Kha'Zix is open. We might see them pick up Kha'Zix first again as we see a Malphite ban off of the purple team. Wow, I guess they just felt that that was just a really strong contender for them last game, and... Um, Perhaps a part in why they lost. Yeah, we do see the Lux picking pick up first. Uh, that's, I believe, the first time that Herf Jones hasn't been banned on Lux this game. That's definitely his champion. He's in the uh, match that he ended up playing because he had a sub for the first match. Um, that was the champion he played all three games of it. So that's where he's comfortable. That's where they're picking. They're picking the Kha'Zix into it as well as a Nocturne pick up for their jungler. That's going to give them a lot of global presence, but if Yellow Beast um, is able to pick up Zack here, that will kind of help to counteract the great engage that Nocturne has. Um, but I'm a little bit afraid because uh, with that pickup of Kha'Zix, the resets are going to be just pretty powerful here. And if um, Pony plays it right and gets a really good team composition, then they're going to be able to close out this game a lot better than last time. Yeah, they've also managed to pick up that Janna for Yaya Puff as well. Um, I really like that pickup. I think that's pretty strong against both Kha'Zix and Nocturne. Kha'Zix and Nocturne jump in. Kha'Zix and Nocturne jump out. So we're seeing the Zac pick up as well. That will definitely help quite a bit. And Tristana now being picked up by Spaz. I believe that he has played that in a game before. Let me just look over at my stats really quick. He has went 6-3-7 and seven on that in game 3 of My Little Pony versus Lead by Example. And they are picking up that Lulu now for Holy Braille. Yes, and that is going to be maybe a Tristana pick up for Spaz. Um, I'm not sure if we've seen much of that play here, but um, it'd be interesting to see what type of AD carry Sinrao is going to pick up to combat that heavy, you know, poke push type of lane, and if maybe Pony is going to go for a potential swap. Oh, Sinrao going for the Sivir. That would be a very interesting change of pace, but I'm not entirely certain you're going to see that locked in. A uh, singed pickup for Reruff in that top lane. Reruff has played singed once, went 4 0 and 9 in it, I believe, in their first match against. I forget who all of a sudden. I can actually look this up. I have it sitting right next to me. Hold on just a moment. He did play that. Well, now the switching is showing. He did play at Singe Game 2 against Team Durgan, where they won 2 0. And we are going to see a Vayne pickup possibly for Sinrio. Uh, that was something that he has played. He played that again in both games versus Team Durgan, where they went 2-0, and he also played that in their loss against Poho Pimps, their only loss going into this particular matchup. So, not been the most successful thing they've had, but it is stuff they're all comfortable with. I think the only real curveball here is definitely that Zack. We have not seen Yellow Beast on it. We've seen Yellow Beast on Eve, seen Yellow Beast on Nocturne, seen Yellow Beast on Nautilus, seen Yellow Beast on Hecarim, have not seen Yellow Beast on Zack yet. I don't believe we've actually seen much Zack for the whole tournament, so it's going to be very interesting to see. And they have left that Yorick open for Cillian. Wow, yeah, um... That is a dangerous thing to leave open. Again, that has been a really strong contender for My Little Pony. And going against Reruff, you know, it's a lane that we saw before. Reruff had a little bit of a hard time just keeping his health off up. But um, especially with that teleport, I know that Cillian hasn't 
had a lot of opportunities to use that teleport very effectively, so hopefully we get something interesting coming on. Um, especially if they end up doing a swap. I don't know if that'll be terribly effective, but um, it might be a good opportunity to three-man a top lane turret down. Yeah, but definitely that Cillian pickup for, uh, that Yorick pickup for Cillian, rather. Not the Cillian pickup for Yorick, but the other way around. Uh, very strong. So far in this tournament, in the two games he played before this match, he was 10, 4, and 12 combined over both games on Yorick, with an average CS per game of 295. So that's something that he's good at, something he's good at just sort of sitting in the lane farming with. Um, it actually was something he ran in Game 3 against Lead by Example, in which they managed to close that series out. And it was also something they ran in Game 1 against Fallback Gaming, who were just eliminated by Lead by Example. And in Game 2, they actually had to ban out Yorick because of how powerful it was. So definitely going to be very interesting to see. I might be looking at this on the wrong side. No, I am not good. But... uh. That Yorick, I'm surprised that they sort of let that slip through at this point. Yeah, definitely. Um, they have kind of an interesting team composition going on here on My Little Pony. They have the good initiate, they have the cleanup, they have the constant damage from Tristana, the way to get in and out. So they've got a lot of gap closers and getaways. Um, so do you see this being more of a team fight composition for them, or more just like, well, catch someone out and go in after that? You know, I'm not really certain what to make of it. They have a lot of those really strong gap closers and a lot of those really strong engages, but they have a Janna on the other team. And Janna is the queen of resetting a fight. So they use all their gap closers and Janna blows them away, and then they're sort of just sort of standing on the outside of the fight wondering what they need to do next, sort of considering their next move. So it's not really something that they'll be able to just engage on consistently because they do have a lot of disengage on front lines aside so i'm not certain they might look for a straight up fight but i'm not entirely certain if they find a straight up fight if they're going to be able to force that fight to actually happen unless frontline wants it to happen yes and as we are waiting on the delay here i want to speak just briefly about the lrss the League of Legends Rising Star Series is a tournament or league circuit for the average player to participate in. We've got double divisions where you can join either the Bronze Silver League or the Gold Plat League. That way you have kind of a fair fight when it comes to making your team and competing on a weekly basis. The great part is at the end of the season, after you've worked hard to win against some of the other teams, you have the opportunity to participate in this tournament. And over the course of two days, we determine who is the rising star of League of Legends. And um, we have a lot of great teams, a lot of close matches, and it is a ton of fun. Yes, looking forward to making this tournament next year and sort of commentating it. Uh, don't want to put you down on the whole commentating thing. I know that uh, commentating this is a lot of fun, but it's a lot of fun playing in this as well. And I'm looking forward to next season very much, both as a competitor and as a caster for this league at this point. Definitely, and it looks like we are going to get to move to the loading screen pretty soon here. Um, in the meantime, uh, we have, uh, for example, I know that they picked Vayne and Janna into a lane that isn't very strong early either, which is Tristana Lulu. Um, do you think that they're going to go for the lane swap because of kind of the weak lanes coming both from both sides, or are they going to be really concerned about Vayne and need to shut down that farm lane with the duo lane? I don't necessarily think that you'll see too much of a lane swap because, you know, at the end of the day, if Vayne is getting free farm, that's all that uh, Frontline's needs for this game for the most part. Although Tristanus, Yorick, that's pretty scary late game as well. So I'm not entirely certain if either side can really afford to let the other side free farm. I think they have to make something happen, and that's going to be something very, very... Uh, weird to see in what would normally be kind of almost a bit of a passive farm lane. I think you'll probably see quite a bit of poke coming out for Tristana and Lulu. They'll probably try and force uh, Jen and Vayne out at some point, but it's going to come down to whether or not they're successful in doing that as to how that bot lane goes, I feel. 
And as we enter the loading screen here, we can do a little bit of skin intimidation. Already I see the Victoria's Janet coming off, and I know that skin isn't terribly uncommon, but um, I absolutely love it. Um, that along with uh, Battlecast Prime Cho'Gath and Aristocat Vein. But uh, on the other side, do you think Eternum Nocturne can win skin intimidation against three of those awesome skins? Uh, I have I have Halloween Nocturne that I run because it's exclusive, so I have... Well, Halloween Nocturne, I think, would be the best way of saying it, because the other possible way of describing it is not necessarily something you want to do in a live broadcast. It does look a bit odd, especially from the South. But uh, Vein, I don't know. I would rather have the Angry Librarian Vein skin, Vindicator Vein, and I personally prefer Frost Queen Janna, so really, at the end of the day... Uh, I guess I'm in the minority of people who don't really like the skins that they have on Frontlines' as team over other ones. Like Lux, I prefer the slightly Russian metal pants Lux. But at the end of the day, I feel like what it's really going to come down to skin-wise is the fact that Lulu is turning people into squirrels and not into cats, cupcakes, or little dragons. Okay, I think I can agree with that. So uh, as we get into the game here, do you think that we're going to see any level 1 fights or invades? I don't. I haven't seen either team go for one at this point. I don't think you're going to see him go for one at this point either. I don't think that My Little Pony has a good way of forcing one, aside from maybe if Nocturne were to start fear or something, and that's going to really hurt his jungling, I feel. So if you see anything, it would be off of Frontline's side, and I don't really feel like that's really their style. I don't feel that's something they would go for. Fantastic, and we do see some of the typical item pickups coming off of the supports, the AD carries, and the junglers. Um, what do you think about Chogas armor? What do I think about Chogas armor? I feel like it's fine if they're expecting... They might be trying to put him elsewhere. I almost wonder if they'll try for... Uh... Lux into Yorick, but that would be kind of awkward. I think that against Yorick, it's not really the best, because there is a not insignificant amount of magic damage that comes off of Yorick, but it's not necessarily a bad pickup as we see Holy Braille going to place that ward in that bush. It takes him a little bit of a while. I know it's sometimes a bit difficult to get that to land where you want it to, but it does manage to get that ward down spot Sinru in that tri-bush. So we have a lot of good ward coverage coming off of the front lines. You'll notice they have um, three down already, which is quite a few. Um, so really protected against any invades. Everyone's just playing it safe here. They do get um, another ward into Tribush as they are going to get golems, but it looks like Spaz and Holy Braille want to kind of mess with them as they're doing that. Yeah, and I think that, well, they've been spotted by that ward, so... I don't think they'll go for it, and I think they're going to try and make something happen on Holy Braille here. And Holy Braille is up a bit far, takes a lot of damage, and already Reruff has cycled down to actually get some damage onto Spaz, and he's forced to flash out. Very unfortunate. That invade was um, a little bit too late, and they didn't have ward coverage, so no golem advantage for Sinreal, but um, they definitely got that flash advantage. Yeah, the and that's probably worth even more than the uh, XP advantage at this point, I would say. Because it also took him down to half health, and that forced him to be a bit passive. Like, you see Janet just going up auto-attacking once, and she's sort of forced to back off, because I'm pretty sure if she lands a tornado, he's either dead or very close to it. So, at this point in time, that's given them a significant advantage in bot lane, almost more than they would get from those double golems, as long as they manage to keep the uh, pony bot lane sufficiently zoned. Yes, and we see um, Zena Zero stepping up to mid lane, but I think that Herf Jones just playing too safely at this point. Not able to land a stun, so no real ganks going on there, but I would hope that we see Zena Zero start to cycle bottom. But actually we have the Ignite come off onto Lux, and she is forced to flash. Blows a potion, but uh, no kill there, so First Blood is still up for grabs, but very good as long as Zena Zero is able to return to mid lane before uh, Lux's flash comes back up. I believe that we might be able to get a kill on that one. Yeah, and that means that Lux has to play this lane very, very passively and very, very carefully, and I'm not entirely certain that's where he's going to want to be. Um, just my estimation of Herf Jones off of these games that he 
wants to be that high impact player. He doesn't want to sit in the lane passively and farm all game. He wants to be making stuff happen. So him being forced to play a bit passively may be very interesting for him as Nocturne looking for something in bot lane, but not going to make anything happen. And he was safe to come in there. That was not warded. Yeah, I'm a little bit surprised that they backed off. Um, They are really pushed up, and I guess that uh, Spaz may have called, hey, we're too low, we're level 2, and they're level 3, and now it's just not a good time for this gank with all this farm. Yeah, and at this point, I think it probably was the right call. If they end up, if they play that wrong at all, I feel like it backfires on them a lot more than they stand to gain out of it if it goes right, even. So, probably a very good call for them, very safe, as we see now <laughs> Vayne and Janna finally going to go do their go uh, double golems. Yeah, and that's just kind of a farming measure as they're pushed up, but I'm surprised they wouldn't stick into lane, um, probably because they're missing wards, because they were able to zone out Spaz and Holy Braille, so I don't know that they needed to leave, but they probably just did that out of safety, for fear from Nocturne. Yeah, I feel like they can just pick that zone up where they left off, though, and it's going to get a lot worse for them, because you look at it, it's four and a half minutes in, and already Vayne has 13 CS up on Tristana, so... Pony's bot lane looking like in a bit of bad shape. This is probably the most vulnerable we've seen Pony looking early game so far this match. Definitely, that invade just set them back too far, and we actually have um, a gank coming in fr for My Little Pony, but that excellent ward has him spotted out. Zach's going to show up maybe for a little bit of a counter gank, and we do get the tornado off onto Spaz, but he just hops away. So with that hop down, it's a very dangerous position for them to push up that far, especially without that tribush ward. So I would be interested to see if we see something happen here. We do have Insanity jumping on her zones, but it's just a little bit of damage with no ultimate coming from in a zero quite yet we're not able to pick up those kills yeah i'm surprised that uh yellow beast didn't try to jump that wall at one point and really make anything happen even if he forces them back like it's probably worth his time at that point but he was he spent a lot of time standing a little sort of crook of that wall there waiting for a good opportunity and just didn't really present himself so i guess he's just gonna err a bit on the side of caution there which probably not that great or probably not that bad i mean <laughs> complete opposite of what I actually said is what I yeah. intended to say. So it looks like Spaz was forced back to pick something up, but all he could pick up is boots, which is pretty dangerous because um, I believe that Sinrail is going to be able to return pretty soon and pick up an actual damage item, which will really turn that lane even more. Um, but at this point, uh, Sinrail is alone electing to farm, so um, maybe they'll be able to make something happen as the lane pushes slightly in the favor of My Little Pony. Yeah, and he does manage to get a good bit of damage onto Holy Braille, but takes some good bit of damage back from the explosive shot of Tristana. Meanwhile, top we have Cillian is forced to flash out because um, Yellow Beast shows up, gets a good leap off, and he just does not want to risk being first blood. Yeah, and at this point, it's a bit of a, a bit of a waiting game. I feel like we're probably going to see first blood within the next minute, minute and a half or so. But I'm honestly not entirely certain where. I'm fairly certain it's not going to be top lane. But now that I've said that, of course, we're going to see it happen top lane. So I feel like mid lane, Lux doesn't have enough mana to make anything happen. Kha'Zix might. Bot lane, I feel, is the most likely place to have something happen. So we definitely want to keep an eye on that. And it's getting to the point where Vayne's going to be able to go back and just buy a BF sword if she wants. Yeah, and we see this beautiful Lux Q get off onto Vinsanity. It is dealing a lot of damage, and he's out of mana, so he's going to hop away, but um, that's uh, a lot of free farm time for Lux to try and catch up versus Vinsanity. Yeah, she was only behind by 8 CS, so not behind by too much, but that should pretty much even it out for her, which is what she needed. Staying very competitive in mid lane and very competitive in top lane, and pulling out ahead in bot lane like that 300 gold advantage is pretty much entirely bot lane as we see zach looking like he wants to jump over the wall but deciding against it once again yeah and i'm a little bit surprised that he hasn't taken that opportunity any of these times um uh it looks like he's just going to pick up gold so maybe he'll come back to try and do something there they do have pink wards at bottom so both teams are looking for some ganks but little do they know that those pink wards are um safe for both teams. We have one in the river bush and one in tri bush, so um, I guess they're both safe even though they think they're looking for a gank. Yeah, I would 
I don't know. At this point, it's very, very weird to me, this whole bottom lane. It's very, very passive. I was expecting there to be some aggression out of the jungle, and I think that My Little Pony is waiting for Nocturne to hit 6, which is fairly reasonable. I just don't really know why Yellow Beast hasn't really made himself more well-known down there. Yeah, um, it might be because they don't really need that pressure, but I really think you're right. It would benefit them a lot to just show his face, maybe show a little fear, because at this point, Spaz and Oldie Brawl are getting pretty brave. They're pushing up. They don't have Tribush Ward. You know, they've got a pink. It almost looks like they would want to dive if Nocturne was able to come down with his ultimate. Um, but I don't think that they're as strong as something like that. Yeah, and because Sinero hasn't spent his gold yet, he has 2,000 gold he's sitting on. So at this point, they are fairly even. In fact, Tristan even has a little bit of an advantage because he still has those health potions, whereas Vayne doesn't. So really, to be fair, it's almost like My Little Pony's bot lane. Yeah, they're behind, but they're almost slightly stronger at this point. So it's going to be very interesting in a minute to see if Nocturne comes down with his ult and they either... I don't think you'll see them go for a dive with that Janna there, but you might see them uh, go for something a bit more aggressive. And unfortunately, yeah, unfortunately, they he is going to walk right over Ward. Um, I don't know if they spotted him for that split second, and he might try to do a lane gank, but the Ward coverage is too good coming from Yaya Puff, and we see Spaz and Holy Braille pushing up pretty far here. Might get an engage from Zack, and we do see him leap over the wall, but Shanna is able to jump out. The flash comes out from Holy Braille. The exhaust goes down onto Spaz, and he is just running away. It is going to be a pickup of a kill onto Holy Braille for first blood. And Tristan is just going to walk away unharmed. So, unfortunate that Nocturne wasn't there to stop that counter gang, but um, it's, at least it was just a support. Yeah, and that was a bit of a awkward uh, kill there, too, because Vayne flashed to get the last hit, and then Zack exploded and killed Lulu. So, a bit of a mis uh, misplay there from front lines aside. They blew flash on Vayne, which is very dangerous. Uh, when they didn't need to, so possibly a bit of a miscommunication there. Obviously a good pickup for uh, Frontline, especially because Vayne now pushed up, is able to go back and spend that 2700 gold now that she has sitting in her inventory, but a little bit of a mistake there from them as well. Yeah, and I think we're going to see both AD carriers go back and pick up, hopefully, their BF swords. Um... Do you think that either one of them is going to go for Blade of the Ruin King, or you think they're going to go straight for, like, Bloodthirster or IE? I think you might see Bloodthirster on Vayne, especially with that BF Sword, now that we see it. Um, I wouldn't have been surprised if Tristana had gone for early Blade of the Ruin King, but I think that it benefits her just as much to go for either that Bloodthirster or that Infinity Edge. And we see the Nocturne Ultimate coming down onto Herf Jones. He shields and is taken down. Vinsanity is low, but Yellow Beast has no choice but to back off of this one. The poke is pretty strong in that, but uh, they are able to pick up that Lux kill and walk away uh, without losing anybody else. Yes, they do pick up that Lux kill. That was very, very well played by uh, Pony to just go in on that and pick her off, but it was a nice attempt by Zack to keep that off, and I thought it was going to work for a second, and then looked at Lux's health bar, it was a bit lower than I expected it to be, and then she just died immediately. But she did pick up that Seeker's arm guard off of just the money that she had sitting in her inventory, so that's going to help her quite a bit against that happening again in the future. On the other hand, I believe Kha'Zix just picked up that Brutalizer, so that's going to negate a lot of the armor as well that uh, Lux just picked up. So, Things starting to go a bit in Pony's favor there, as well as top lane, where you see that 14 CS lead now for York. I believe he's going for that. I'm actually not certain what he has a double longsword for. I guess Spirit of the Elder Lizard. I have not seen that yet on York. That's going to be a very interesting one for me to watch. Definitely, and I believe that um, last time Cillian played, he did run that. He did run a little bit of a more offensive build, so... Um, as long as he's able to keep that farm up, uh, he may be a strong contender in team fights. Less on the tanky side, but I'm a little bit worried about maybe Pony lacking tankiness. Do you think that's going to be a problem, or? 
I think it'll be a problem for a little while. There's a certain point in time where tankiness is really valuable around mid game, but once you start getting into late game, everything still kind of dies quickly. Everyone's got their armor penetration, their magic penetration. So. We might. Well, tankiness falls off a sure, bit. Sure, sure. And we almost saw an engage there onto Spaz, but he was able to hop out, and Zach's not going to stick around because it is warded, but. Um, uh, looks like the bottom lane has returned to being fairly even with Jasana being just a little bit behind in CS and not with that assist gold. But for now, the items are even enough that it probably doesn't make a difference. Well, there is a fairly hefty lifesteal advantage over on Vayne's side. She does have that, that stamp true. scepter over the uh, health potions, which are the sustain for Jasana at this point. So a bit stronger for her, especially just with the nature of you put a shield on and she's healing health back up, so even if she doesn't necessarily get the shield on at the right time, that's healing back up anyway, so it might as well have been absorbed by a shield. So, that's something people don't really often think of is the nature of shields, as in if you buy sustain with them, it increases the value of the shield, because you can use the shield to safely sustain back your health bar without worrying about just taking more damage and you would be life stealing back. Sure, and we had a little bit of a skirmish going on at top lane, but nothing super special. I'm a little bit surprised that we haven't seen more gank action going on. It's more or less been each lane to himself. Um, we do see a lot of damage coming off from Zillion onto Rerev, but it's the typical mid lane farm. Yeah, I feel like we haven't really been focusing that much on top lane. It's a bit of a shame. I have great respect for both of these players, both Rerev and Zillion. Uh, when I was doing my uh, research this morning, as I guess this is a great time to talk about it as we're in a pause, so I have to fill time anyways. Uh, going into this game, Cillian, highest average CS so far in the tournament out of anyone who's still in it, or I guess now that uh, Fallback is out, is even more still in it. Whereas uh, Reruff, on the other hand, has one of the highest KDAs in the tournament. I believe actually the second highest after... Uh, Herf Jones on Lux at 11.67 going into this match. Uh, going into this match, Reruff had a 10.8 KDA, so it's different styles. Uh, Reruff makes a lot more of an impact across the map in terms of kills, assists, and like that. But Cillian, on the other hand, is a lot stronger at sort of standing there farming quite a bit. She has, I mean, that 260 or so average CS a game on overall and 290 on yorick he's very good at farming so these farm lanes where you keep having like cho'gath versus yorick which neither side is necessarily going to kill the other at any point unless some weird stuff happens definitely playing more heavily into Cillian's favor than into reruffs yeah and that's a little bit what we saw um in some of the past games where we saw this matchup Reruff was able to keep up somewhat in farm, but he did lose his tower first, so hopefully we don't see any of that, because that would, would put them at a disadvantage. Meanwhile, bottom, we see him pushing up, and it looks like they might just back off, so um, no early dragon fights, no wards, and I guess um, nothing crazy going on for now. Yeah, we've really sort of moved into a very calm game at this point. I believe at the 15-minute mark in the past couple of games, we'd seen a lot of stuff already happen, but it's sort of 1-1. Neither side's taken a tower. I, neither side's really paid too much consideration to Dragon. It's only 200 gold difference between these two teams. This is a lot more even. I feel like that win gave front lines a lot more confidence. Going into game number two, they seemed almost a bit shaky at times, but... In game number three, they've been doing a lot better of a job holding off um, Pony's usual early game sort of aggression, sort of not aggression. And also that catch with that ward as we see ult coming down the bot lane. And we see Nocturne diving in onto somebody. And it uh, looks like Vayne has forced to blow the ultimate. Zach is there for the counter engage. But Kha'Zix jumps in and they might make a dive here. But decide to back off. The Spaz dived in too far. Gets the barrier and barely is able to live. But Lux has made it in. And ultimate has been sanity for a kill. And it looks like uh, they're just going to back off of this one. It started off kind of messy. But ended up working out well for the front lines. Yeah, that was very unfortunate. Spaz ended up underneath the turret and got caught by the uh, Janna Tornado off of Yaya Puff, so they didn't pick anything up, and Spaz was in a very bad position, and then Lux showed up, and Kha'Zix was in a very bad position and ended up getting taken down. As we see now, 
Frontline's going for Dragon, and Pony may be looking to interrupt. Lux misses her Q, which was pretty vital in trying to help that team fight go smoothly for them, but it looks like they're just in such a great position to take Dragon that nothing is going to happen, and My Little Pony is going to be forced to back out, although they are able to get that timer. Yeah, very well played by Frontlines. They turned that gank around in bot lane very well and turned it into a dragon. So now we're seeing them sort of start to, in this game, take advantage of the small mistakes by My Little Pony. So tables basically have turned at this point. It'll be interesting to see what happens from here on out. Definitely. So we saw that first dragon go down. We saw the first team fight go down. And now that we have um, a little bit of an advantage, hopefully we start to see towers. But the kills are spread out pretty far um, since there's only three of them. Uh, so nothing too crazy going on. Just a little bit of the typical push, pressure, and back off. Yeah, and just looking at the gold across the map as well. We see Spaz has that 400 gold advantage up in top lane. That's mostly going to be dragon and a bit of farm uh we actually see lux forced to flash out because kha'zix almost went for a dive there just wanted to play it safe make sure that herf jones didn't take that kill and meanwhile bottom spaz and holy braille had a really good opportunity to get some damage off onto the turret but zach has shown up and this might be a great time for them to engage but spaz's hop is still up holy braille however is not gonna be able to get away tristan is forced to blow the ultimate but isn't able to help holy braille get out of that one so maybe another instance where holy braille is up just a little bit too far and didn't account for spaz having that jump out of the situation yeah and vane now a thousand gold up on tristana so i mean you know what people say fed vane being scary then she's getting to that point already and it's only 20 minutes in she already has that thousand gold advantage up on to tristana as i just said she has bloodthirster and a zeal whereas tristana is still attempting to finish her infinity edge so I feel like if they had a fight right now, then Frontlines would win it fairly hard, as we're seeing Cho'Gath desperately trying to chase down the Orc, and it's almost kind of pathetic to watch, unfortunately. Yeah, and actually, um, we see nothing super crazy going on, just because of the great ward coverage. We haven't seen any invades, we haven't seen anything, except now we see a jump from Insani onto Herf Jones, but he is going to back off. Just a little friendly play there. And um, Rerif is doing significantly better in the top lane. I know that before Rerif was getting kind of beat up by Cillian, but um, he's holding his own pretty well now and just pushing up, even though he is not sustaining quite as well as Cillian. We might see a chase across the mid lane, or the top lane here, and nope, just going to kind of back off here. And it looks like Zach wanting to go in towards uh, Kha'Zix, but Kha'Zix kind of backing off at this point, so nothing really going to happen in that mid lane. And there's not really much happening across the map as we see York now going on to Cho'Gath. And Cillian is going to just kind of whack on Rerif as much as possible, but it's Cho'Gath. I mean, you're not going to take him down by doing that. So it's just a poke game and waiting <coughs> until he gets dangerously low and is forced to go back and then using that opportunity to push the wave and maybe take the turret. Yeah, and Tristana has now finished her Infinity Edge, so things are a lot more even in that bot lane again. Uh... Bloodthirster should give Vayne an advantage if they're straight up dueling, but just once Tristana gets some more items like a Phantom Dancer or something like that, a bit of crit chance, you'll start, start to see her pull a bit ahead. The concern I have on Tristana's side on Spaz is that he doesn't have any lifesteal, so just to really worry about as we see them doing a lot of damage. And we get a really good tornado off onto Spaz, um, the condemned to knock away, but the damage has already been done. Meanwhile, top we have Zen Zero having to kind of fill for Cillian while he gets back, but they don't know the Yellow Beast is there, and Yellow Beast hops out into the fight. The fear does go down onto Yellow Beast, but it's really just a skirmish because neither team is ready to commit to a full 2v2 or chase them down across that lane. Yeah, and to be honest, at this point, I'm not certain either team really has the couple of minutes it would take for either side of that fight to take down the other side. I mean, there just isn't enough damage up there for them to take out Cho'Gath or Zach, and there isn't really enough damage on their side to deal with the other side. So basically, top lane's still going to be a bit of a farm vest for a little while longer. Mid lane, I feel like Vinsanity has a larger farm advantage than he had a couple minutes ago, but I might just be misremembering. No, Bot I... lane... 
I think you're correct. And actually, top lane, we saw Cillian pick up a pink ward. So even though it's been a farm fest, I'm really hoping that that might be a sign that we might see some interesting ganks coming on here. Maybe with Vinsanity roaming top or a Nocturne ultimate. Yeah, and we're actually going to see Cho'Gath, well, looking like he wants to back, but we might see Vayne taking this first tower of the game. It's see an ult coming in. Uh, Nocturne ultimates onto Vayne. The Lulu ultimate goes off. Yaya Puff is able to separate the two of them, but not quite enough. Both flashes are blown. Yaya is able to shield herself, but is whimsied, and Vincenny comes in to pick up the kill onto Vayne. The dive is just too powerful. Herf, zones, Herf Jones is going to try and get some damage off on a Vincenny, but this time he's got better positioning. He's a little bit stronger, and it looks like they're going to be able to push down this turret for potentially the first turret of the game without uh, any real contest from Herf Jones. Yeah, that was very, very well played by My Little Ponies and Azira coming in with that ultimate while Vayne and Janna almost managing to take down that tower, but that was just a really well-executed gank by them, and really, at the end of the day, I mean, just looking at from a numbers perspective, uh, Zinazero is very, very important to Pony's success in these games. He has very, very high impact across the map in every game we've seen. Just generally, we've said this a lot in game one especially, where Jarvan really didn't have too much influence across the map, but Nocturne really, really did. Did. I don't think it was Nocturne, actually. Now I think about a Hecarim, sorry. Trying to remember. Memory is bad. But Zero every game has had a good deal more influence than Yellow Beast. And this game, Yellow Beast has been doing quite a bit more, and that's probably why it's a lot more even. Definitely, that jungle pressure really means quite a bit. And here we see <laughs> great ward coverage come off of the front lines. Um, a lack of a, a ward on Dragon is going to cause a problem here. Vayne does blow her ultimate and Tornado to go after Holy Braille, but she is ulting and is barely able to make it away. Uh, very good ultimate on her part and shield, and she is going to walk away. But the problem is now that front lines is going to get a free Dragon. Yes, and also in the middle of that, Lux getting an ultimate down onto Tristana, taking Tristana down to half health. It looks like they might even still try and contest this dragon. Yeah, this is pretty dangerous for them with those cooldowns um, unavailable at the moment. Uh, Frontlines does pick up that dragon and is able to more just disengage, even though, I don't know, uh, it might have been a good opportunity for the Frontlines to go on that. On the one hand, they might have picked up something, but on the other hand, it's a lot safer for them to just back away. So they're just playing it safe. They know they don't really have any reason to try and force that there. If it goes bad for them, then it throws away a lot of their advantage at that point in time. But there's not, they don't really gain much from just killing them at this point, because they'll likely get bot tower soon anyways, and that's about the only thing they could force off of that. And as I say that, they managed to take the bot tower. You're psychic gotta have the psychic casting ability as we see <laughs> Kha'Zix coming in. Kha'Zix, they need to try and get Lux out of this farm fest at some point in time soon. She's not really winning it. Kha'Zix is getting stronger and stronger and stronger and soon Kha'Zix will be able to be stronger and stronger and stronger elsewhere. They want to get out of laning soon. Kha'Zix has uh, already hit level 16, has evolved the ultimate so he has that extra mobility from the third charge as well as the extra tankiness from the damage reduction so he's a very large threat at this point and he's especially a large threat to someone like Vayne where her only escape is sort of turning invisible because of her ultimate so I wouldn't be too surprised if you see uh, Kha'Zix or someone else on Pony always carrying around the pink ward so that when Vayne is in a fight they just drop it on the ground and that's her That's her ability to move around to fight safely, just completely gone immediately. So we're going to see pressure now from Pony on this mid lane. Yeah, and they won't be able to press it down because they are missing that minion wave, but it is pretty low, so if they hang out, I think that they'll be able to get a good fight or at least um, push down something if they just take their time. They are pushing on bottom lane and top lane, so they don't really have to worry about those while they try and press on in the mid lane. Yeah, I feel like in the first two games at this point in time, we're 25 minutes in. At this point in time in the first two games, I felt like My Little Pony was completely in control of the game. This time, Frontlines holds a very slight advantage. It's about a thousand gold difference. So this game a lot closer than the past two. Past two, uh, The past one was a complete come from behind. As we see, Zach wanting to jump in, not really getting anything, and Yorick taking down top tower. 
Wow, so yeah, good good move for My Little Pony. Not able to get the engage from the front lines there, and now it's going to turn into a full 5v5, so it's a little bit more dangerous, but as even as the teams are, we catch Holy Braille out again. The Lux Ultimate goes down and gets that kill without a problem. Spaz is taking damage, but is able to jump out, and is just going to poke away, but now My Little Pony is put on the defensive as Vayne's ultimate is down. Um, they might be able to push down this turret, but Yaya Puff takes a lot of damage. Uh, not able to pick up that kill quite yet, so My Little Pony is definitely putting up a fight here, but I don't think they'll be able to defend from the front line's 5 rush. I believe with Janna back, however, uh, front lines will not go for it. Vayne ult is down if a fight occurs, and... I don't know. I don't think that you'll see front lines go for it as they back off. Um, it would have been a nice opportunity had they picked up one more they might have considered going for it, but they only picked up one, so not quite enough. And we do see that pink ward come out from Lulu now, so hopefully she'll be saving. I believe she has a couple of those, but I might just be looking at the inventory wrong. Yeah, she only has one of those. No, is that two? It's hard hard for me to read these numbers. My apologies. Yeah, she has two. Hopefully she'll save the other one to fight that vein if a fight actually occurs. Yes, and um, we see the front lines milling about here, trying to defend their front turret uh, in the mid lane, but uh, just getting some friendly damage off on Desilian, who isn't quite that tanky at this point. Um, just going to kind of regen up, and we're waiting for Vin Sanity to get back in the fight before they want to engage, but Zax jumps in onto Silly, and he is forced to flash out. The beautiful Q from Lux, and the ultimate goes off to Tintersana, and man, the damage is just too much. Nocturne is taken out by Vayne, and wow, that was just really well played on the part of Frontlines. Um, we are going to have a dive here. Holy Braille and Vin Sanity are able to make it out without a problem, but that turret is going to go down, it looks like. Um, it's just a poke fest, really, but... On, as far as the front lines is concerned, this is going really well. Another engage from Zach going on to Zillion. Um, they are going to get a lot of damage off and pick up that kill onto York, which is going to allow them to take another turret. Man, holy cow. Yeah, we've hit that mid game where front lines tankiness is going to start paying off for them. And they do manage to pick up those two towers really easily. Uh, Vayne did a lot of work in that fight, but. Definitely the start of that fight was that one Lux Snare onto Spaz, and then just the ultimate completely wiping him off the face of the earth. And that enabled Frontline to take that first turret safely. Then they managed to catch Cillian out behind with the Zack jump and grab another one. So very well played by them. They do manage to turn that around and grab two turrets off of it and pull themselves out to a 4,000 gold advantage. Yeah, and that is uh, quite a hefty lead. Right now, you'll notice that all the lanes are pushed up for the front lines. Do you think that they're going to group up here and, you know, continue that mid lane push? Or do you think they're going to just let uh, My Little Pony push everything back in their favor? Uh, I think front lines needs to keep the pressure up right now. They need to take more while their tankiness is still paying off for them at a certain point, especially once you have that uh, Yorick ult on Tristana, on Tristana who's getting closer and closer to late game, things might start to swing back in My Little Pony's favor a bit. My Little Pony has a lot of damage once they're fully built, and damage scales better into late game than tankiness does generally. So, Frontlines has to look to make something happen at some point in time, fairly soon. So it looks like um, that is what they're trying to do here. They have pretty good ward coverage and pinks at that, but they are do realize that they're spotted out at blue. Um, it looks like My Little Pony is going to play kind of defensively here, doesn't want to get caught out or lose another team fight, and their ward coverage is just not cutting it at the moment. So um, everyone is forced to play kind of safely at this point. Yeah, My Little Pony is just, just stand back and turtle, stand back and turtle, stand back and turtle, wait for a good chance to do something, and it's up to front lines to give them that chance. So we're in a bit of a holding pattern now. See Tristana taking up uh, Red Buff fairly easily. And I don't know. It's going to be interesting to see. We do see Holy Braille picking up that Oracle. So they're going to start sweeping out those wards in their jungle. That's going to give them a lot more... Uh, a lot of help just in ensuring they don't get seen the ward get caught or get seen the ward and someone says, okay, 
they're all down here. Let's go take this big worm sticking out of the ground or something similar. So I really like that pickup. I feel like we haven't seen oracles enough in this match. I feel like we should have seen a lot more, but things getting a bit dicey as we see front lines now moving towards Baron and Holy Braille in the area clearing. Dicey indeed. We see a lot of ward baiting going to happen here because um, they want to clear out those wards, but Holy Braille has gotten caught out quite a few times, so she really has to be very careful when doing that. So we have Zinnies are actually getting caught in the key from Lux, but nothing going to follow up there from the front lines. I think that might have been a good opportunity for them to go in, but they were just a little bit too split up. So um, My Little Pony is just going to kind of back off, group up, and wait for the worst of it. Yeah, and it's just, I don't know. I feel like, I feel like they need to deal with this somehow. I'm not entirely certain what they could do to deal with it. They could try, I mean, even if they try like split pushing, I'm not certain if that'll work because there's just a chance that before anything can show up, then the fight's over. I feel like now we might, no. I don't know, Vayne's not with the rest of the team, so they can't really do anything to engage on this fight in mid lane. But on the other hand, Vayne and Cho'Gath are up there taking a tower, so they're going to see that picked up fairly easily. Yeah, and a really sneaky move on the part of the front lines there, but Xenozero does get cut out with the Lux ultimate, and Holy Braille is going to blow Locket, which might be able to save him, but the Ignite goes down, and the beautiful Lux Q goes down, holy cow, Yaya! Resets the fight, but it is just too much damage. They follow up there. Yellow Beast is trying to track them down, but um, he's kind of wandering around. So th we see Spaz get ulted by Lulu, and he is not saved by that. So Zillian is going to get taken down here by the front lines, and they're going to be able to clean this up as long as they pick up the kill onto Kha'Zix. With the flash from Zack, that is going to be possible for them. And if they're able to catch Holy Braille, it might even be an ace. Yeah, I'm not certain if they're going to try for Holy Braille there, but that was a very, very odd fight to see happen. Uh, Frontlines got a bit caught out there, sort of separate in the jungle, and then they turned it around fairly easily. Trist kind of jumped into the middle of... jumped away from her entire team behind the enemy team. It really didn't pay off for her. She, I believe, picked up one and then died pretty much immediately. So that really didn't help that much. Uh, I just don't know if... I don't know if Pony can win a fight at this point. It's very hard for them. They have to sort of... I feel like they played that a bit wrong, too. I think they had everything split up, and I noticed a lot of damage went down onto, like, Cho'Gath and like that, and not a lot of damage went down onto uh, Vayne until a lot later in the fight. They did pick Vayne up, but she just sort of stood around auto-attacking the My Little Pony team for quite a while before they took her out, so a bit of a misplay, I feel, in that team fight by My Little Pony gave the team fight win somewhat over to front lines where they maybe not necessarily should have done that. Uh, yeah, have that. and I feel like at this point, um, My Little Pony really needs to pick up the ward coverage. It's really killing them because they can't go anywhere without knowing where the front lines are, and it's going to be really vital for them to survive this, not get caught out, and be able to avoid team fights. Um, because right now, they're going to be pretty strong when it comes to just sitting back and waiting for a mistake to happen, turtling really well, and avoiding a full on full fight. Because uh, right now, obviously, the front lines has a lead. So um, hopefully, we get some wards out, and that way, we're able to catch somebody from the front lines out. Yeah, I've. They were desperately trying to catch out My Little Pony there. They dropped uh, Cho'Gath Rupture. They dropped Janna Tornado. They almost got some and weren't quite able to land anything. So had they done that, they probably would have been able to take Free Baron or something like that. But now they're just sort of standing around this top lane. It looks like they might want to pressure that inhibitor. And Vinsanity is in a very da uh, dangerous position right now. Yeah, little does he know. But neither does the front lines, it seems. Um, we're going to catch some people out. Oh, and we get a beautiful Lux Q and ult onto Zen Zero. That is going to be a throw right there. And the rest of My Little Pony is going to group up to try and defend against that inhibitor. But I'm not sure that they're going to be able to contest it, um, considering it's a 5v4 and they are behind. So um, they might just have to let it go this time. 
Yeah, Lux Ultimate is going to be back up for the rest of this fight as well, as we see the one binding landing taking down half of Spaz's health already. And that was just Zinazero backing on a ward, and that was that lack of vision control. And we have the uh, Zag jump into the middle of the fight. Spaz jumps out without a problem, but there's a lot of damage going on Zillion. Holy Rogue gets the ultimate down, but Vayne is wreaking havoc, picks up the kill onto Spaz, and perhaps even Zillion here. Wow, this really could be game. We have Insanity jumping into, but he's completely annihilated, and Braille is just wandering around, doesn't know what to do, there is just nothing that she can do to stop these five people. Yes, and the GG's coming down from My Little Pony, and front lines, we might see a surrender, we might just see them be able to take the Nexus before everything gets back up, I believe that is going to be game number three, two front lines turning this entire match around in very convincing fashion, so congratulations to them, and we will see them in the finals. Very well played on the side of both teams, and it looks like uh, we will take a short break and then move on to the third place match, an exciting game. It's going to be between, I believe, um, Pony and LBX. It will be a rematch from one of the first matches of the tournament. Definitely going to be exciting, so we will see that here in about 10 minutes. <laughs> 